Welcome to Cardboard of the Rings, your bi-weekly podcast about the Lord of the Rings, the card game, which is a living card game by Fantasy Flight Games. Take it away, yes, Brandon. Yes, episode 121, the very special Gen Con recap episode. Uh, it's been a while now, so it's actually going to be very exciting to relive it. It's, it's been what, guys? Like three weeks now? Three weeks since Gen Con? Something like that. Four weeks? It's been a Sounds while. about right. But, you know, during the summer, time is, you cannot measure time. It is the most whacked out thing. So a really special episode. It's also the second last episode of the first age. And I'm going to qualify this right now. If this is the first time you're listening to Cardboard of the Rings, turn it off and come back on episode 123, when it's going to be back to the more normal Cardboard of the Rings that's loaded with content about Lord of the Rings, the card game which is a living card game by Fantasy Flight Games. But this particular episode, we're going to be reminiscing about Gen Con, and there will be some Lord of the Rings, the card game content in there. So if you're not really interested in our Gen Con antics, we are going to seed Lord of the Rings throughout. I'm Brandon. With me, as always, is Brian. Hello. Hi, Brian. Hi. You're working on a hot tub tonight. That's yep. exciting. Is it? Well, it's exciting in that uh, the listeners will have to excuse you if you have to dip out once in a while to go deal with the hot tub. Because it's a pretty involved process, yeah? Was that an intentional pun? What? Dip no. Out. Dip. Oh, yeah, dip. Yeah, there you go. Um, I love hot tubs as a participant, but not as an owner. I can see it being a lot of work. It's it. It's not as terrible as I was expecting, but it's still a lot. Yeah. Like cottages, pools, hot tubs. I'm an amazing guest. Really, really good. (laughs) With us as well is Sean. Hi, Sean. Hello. Sean, you know, I feel like I have spiritually continued to be with you through Gen Con after we did our beer exchange. (laughs) You know? I I haven't been plowing through them all in one night. Oh, Uh, I totally did. (laughs) Enjoying them slowly. (laughs) Well, you know what I do is I have like one or two Sean beers and then a bunch of Bud Light. Uh, but they've been really, really good so far. You've got excellent taste. The one that was kind of weird. Oh shoot, what was it was called? It was called Cosmic or something. Oh uh, yeah, Cosmos. Um, so which Cosmos. one? Cosmos. The the crop circles. It... Yes. Yeah. Okay. See, I'm yeah. still out on that one too. But it was wacky enough that I thought you might love it. Yeah, it was too much. And you know what? I drank it out of the woods after it was rolling around in my backpack for about two hours mm. um and so i feel like it's a normally foamy beer it was intensely foamy it's pretty like you know when you normal. swallow and it starts out like acceptably wide in your esophagus but about halfway down it started to expand and then you get that painful <laughs> blast of stretch in your esophagus God. it caused me a great deal of esophageal pain <laughs> you guys have not experienced that let's go with you yeah. i mean i definitely know what you're talking about but yeah, um, it yeah. sounded sarcastic. It wasn't. <laughs> that one is interesting. I do like it. It's got Sorry, too much. My computer froze. It's got a little bit too much. Uh, it's got a little like like basil leaf in there, and I think they overdid it on that a little bit. Yeah, and it's also uh, I don't like beers that are too acidic, mm. and that one's pretty acidy. Mm-hmm. But oh, the rest of them are so good. So thank you. <laughs> I, I, I the beer exchange was so fun at Jacob. We'll talk about that in a bit. Yes, it, it needs to expand though. It needs to expand. And Electron John needs to bravely, illegally ship me some beer through across the border. <laughs> I think it'd be fine. Um, okay, with us as well is Chad. Hi, Chad. Oh. Hi, Brandon. How are you? Uh, amazing. Well, kind of. I'm back to work. But summer's over, you know. But otherwise, I'm pretty good. I'm excited to relive Gen Con. You know what I yes. mean? Yes. I'm glad we made the list because I was definitely forgetting things. Yeah, yeah, me too. And, I, and you know what? I was going to qualify it later, but I'll qualify it now. Sorry to everybody that, you know, we had interesting experiences and then I either, like, forget or... It's really tough. You guys got to admit it. It's really tough to link people between their username and their real names. And, oh, my gosh, I get I get oh, messed up. Oh, God, yes. Yeah, it's really, really tough. <clears throat> really, really about tough. i that, too. I need repetition. Yeah, yeah. And you know what? If I see their face, I'm like, oh, hey, dude. Because you guys know I call everyone dude or chum or pal. I, I'm terrible with names. You've never called me any of those. Really? Well, hey there, guy. Wow. How's it going? <laughs> yeah, that's fair. It's, I mean, hey, it's, lackey. I've never once called you lackey with you present. <laughs> Maybe you should. 
We've got a really, really special guest on the show this tonight. Normie. <laughs> what? What did you say? Sorry, my computer's acting up. Oh, it's fine. Okay. I heard. Don't ignore me. Okay. Anyways, uh, Stokes is with us as well. Hi, Stokes. How you doing, brother? Hello. What time is it there across the pond, as they say? Two a.m. Two in the morning, eh? That's super... Is that late or early? I don't know. I guess it depends on who you are. Late for most people. Thanks for joining us, man. I know that's tough. Like, I get whiny, and these guys will attest to it if we if we start at, like, 9. And meanwhile, you're here at 2 a.m., so we really appreciate it, dude. And no Stokes worries. on the cast, because he had a huge amount of shared experience with us, and he was one of our hotel mates, so we thought it would be wise to get him on here. And, you know... The swag. I guess we can reveal it now. So used yeah. to not talking about it. <laughs> hey, but the Stokes secret. was so critical. Essentially, the swag could not have happened without Stokes. So <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna talk about that too. Um. Okay. So in terms of uh, where we'll start, you want to just start talking about the swag? Let's start talking about swag. Uh, a lot of yeah. people. So what we did, and uh, you guys can chime in. And help me here. Uh, who came up with the original idea of doing play mats? I think it was just kind of through a, a nebulous brainstorming joint, document, yeah? Totally joint effort, I believe. Yeah. All four of us said it at the same time. I mean, we've I been remember. talking about doing play mats for like three years. Yeah, it is true. And we'd also talked about, I think it was Sean that had talked about commissioning artwork for something. Yeah, I was talking about alt art cards at that point, but. Mm-hmm. Uh huh. So what we decided is to you know, bring those two ideas together and we got Stokes to create uh, a custom play mat for us. Uh, in, well, he created the art that then went on a custom play mat and they turned out absolutely fantastic. You know, like when I envisioned it in my mind's eye so long ago, they really, really turned out tremendously. Oh, they're so beautiful. Thrilled. I would agree. Yeah. And you know what? We nailed it in terms of like the keepsakeness in that there's, like, uh, the logo of Cardboard the Rings, the Gen Con logo, the end of the first stage. You know, we did super great with the branding. I'm so proud of us on this project. It yep. really, really is tremendous. Super tremendous. Stokes, in terms of, like, art that you've produced, if one is, like, an <laughs> embarrassing doodle that you hope <laughs> someone doesn't see... You really and... don't want to ask me that. <laughs> oh, no! No, because, like, it's everything that I draw is, like... St- you know, six weeks later, I look in, all I see is the problems. Oh, yeah, yeah. I could imagine that if I... So, if I... just after I finished it, it was like a nine. Now, not so much. It was what? Sorry, you cut out for a sec. When I first finished it, it was like a nine. But yeah. now now I look at it and no, not not nearly. No, don't, like over, don't overanalyze it. 8.5. <laughs> My up. enthusiasm for it when I first saw it was a 10, and now it is... A 10. I freaking <laughs> love it so much. Now, people were wondering, so each of us got to kind of uh, try to influence Stokes a bit in terms <laughs> so, of what we would see on wait, the mat. Wait, hang on. Before we get there, for those who maybe aren't looking at a picture of it, what we decided to do was um, you know, portray a, a seminal moment in, in the life of a Lord of the Rings LCG right. player. So what we landed on was getting your face smashed in by a hill troll on the banks of the Anduin. That's right. Yeah, but what were some of the funny things we came up with first, though? <laughs> oh, uh, man, we should... I'm going to pull up oh, that wait, plan. I document. still have that list. Hold on. Oh, yeah. some of them were so funny. Well, some of them were also inappropriate. So <laughs> let me... Uh, That's very true. Let me, let me just pull that up there. Inappropriate? On this show? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, it was Sean's stuff, right? but we didn't have the heart to censor him. <laughs> Cardboard of the Rings here. Yeah, we did a lot of thinking about it. We thought very carefully. And I believe, I and I just give credit to Sean by default for, for most things. I think it was Sean that was like, let's do Banks of the Anduin, yeah? That was originally my idea, yes. Mm-hmm. Which I immediately fell in love with. It came out pretty great, I feel. Oh, um, it's so good. So good. I think, yeah. So, so as it's sorry, as you were saying before, I interrupted. So we've got uh, basically each host tried to get an element uh, to fit within the <laughs> within the art, and uh, it's kind of hopefully fun to try to pick out which host did what. 
Well, are we gonna tell people? Sure. Do I think that's what people want to? Mine should be pretty okay. Damn I'll, obvious. I'll read the. I'll read the uh, original art direction <laughs> as <laughs> as it's written here. <laughs> Three heroes are facing off against the cave troll on the bank of the Anduin. The troll has taken a swipe at the heroes and hit Gloin in a shower of coins. He is being released from him due to the impact. I'm reading it as is. At this point, I wanted to kill myself. <laughs> Boromir has deftly dodged the blow. And then in brackets, it says, as indicated by some sweepy movement lines, <laughs> it is now blowing the horn of Gondor out to his lips in one hand. In his other hand, he is holding a hotly burning torch that could theoretically be used to illuminate a cave. <laughs> Unbeknownst to Boromir, a snake enemy is partially wrapped around his leg and prepping for a strike. <laughs> it says, Chad, Chris, Brian, please add a sentence or two. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> Stokes, I'm really glad that you have the strength of character just be like, what an idiot. And then... <laughs> Do something that made good sense. I mean, I've had worse briefs from people, I'm not going to lie. Really? Yeah. Did they use technical terms like sweepy movement lines? Yeah. Yeah, that's... There's like you know. there's like a, a little cartoon strip going around where it's it's a, a drawing of an artist and a writer at a comic convention. And the writer's saying, you know, comics are easy because you've got an unlimited budget. You, it costs just as much to have 10,000 ships drop out of out of warp in, in a in orbit of a planet as it does to have two people talking in a diner and then the next panel is the eyes trying to murder the writer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I could see that and I can appreciate that. But uh, you nailed Boromir. Like, you know, we had a concern that people might think it was Aragorn or something, but having the horn there and just his general demeanor was crushing it. So that was super tremendous. Well, I tried uh, to we... make it look a little bit like the the card art, but I went with all art Boromir for for that one because wisely he likes the original Boromir. Mm-hmm. Wisely, That's if you went with the original like, one, he looks like an angry baseball mitt. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, Chad, did you want to reveal yours? I asked to be an elf sniping from a tree. Because I am a bow hunter, and Haldir is my favorite hero, so I picked an elf. Yep, and you can see him featured quite prominently there. Sean, your request? <laughs> Surprising no one. I wanted to be Gloin getting bashed in the head by a cave troll, or a hill troll. Uh, but instead, he is standing valiantly next to his chest O money. Yes, the, the, the Chesto money is there to, to represent the big cash money. Oh, I just loaded the high-res version. Damn, it looks so good. Uh, and Brian, your idea and another part of my idea kind of merged and synthesized into possibly the most beautiful flower of art to ever blossom. <laughs> uh-huh. Brian, are you, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. You're just staggered by the That's a really here. nice way of saying that you steamrolled me. <laughs> I didn't steamroll you. No, no, it came together. So why don't you tell what you wanted, and then we'll talk about how, you know, like you and I tend to do, we made, like, something even more wonderful together. Um, I think what I had originally discussed was incorporating a Rohan element. It was going to be this dude, like, hiding in the background, uh, desperately searching for a horse that was never to be found. <laughs> Um, I don't really know how to convey that to an artist, however. Right. So instead, we altered our plans slightly. I mean, I think that was me more than anything else because once Chris put his two cents in as well, it was it was going to get pretty crowded. It was going to be Homer Simpson developing the car. That's the topic yeah. I was trying to avoid by just basically being like, well, I had an idea, but Dave didn't put it in there. <laughs> but Brandon but, forced me to talk about it, so I just made up a story. <laughs> but then, Brian, the damn you you do have an element in there, a very important one. Yes. I insisted that the troll's loincloth be as orange as possible. I believe what I said to Stokes was the orangiest orange that ever oranged. Mm-hmm. I'd like to and point he... out as well that the orange that that we settled on is is actually red as far as Photoshop's concerned. <laughs> Interesting. Um, but I do remember he sent us a proof, and everyone was like, it looks really good, it looks really good. And I just sent a single message that said, Oranger. 
<laughs> well, and I think he sent the, the 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 budgie smuggler card as inspiration for him. Oh, he didn't need it. I know he's got it framed on his. It's desk. on my screensaver. <laughs> <laughs> And so if to everyone don't know about the budgie smuggler, you got to go back and look on our Facebook page. To everyone claiming that I am the troll, I am not the troll. I am the piece that keeps the troll at bay. There you go. <laughs> mm. <laughs> and then, you know, it was kind of dark to see Brian's bright, brilliant orange budgie smuggling troll loincloth. So the torch element that I had originally requested appeared beneath, beneath the troll's legs to help illuminate the private area of the troll and brighten the redness. Well, I guess it's orangeness, right? So all in all, it just came together unbelievably well. I think my favorite part, you would think it would be like, oh yeah, Boromir. It's the light coming in through the trees that Mm -hmm. messes with me. You see how it's playing on the the troll's back, the light? Mm Mm-hmm. It's pretty, Dapple. pretty incredible. I mean, that, that's all the colorist. That's with me. I passed it off to a friend of mine called Lara, who uh, colors uh, comic book covers for IDW and stuff like that. Oh, well, and she did she, a wonderful job. She did the coloring. Yeah. Can you convey to her that the, the, the recipients of the colored piece were thrilled? Absolutely thrilled. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No problem. Can okay, you good. read what you wrote to her about the orange? <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll hang on. I'm, guessing, I'm guessing it's very derogatory against me. Do you have to look it up, Stokes? Because I'm going to read some of the yeah, you, failed you. ideas. Uh, failed ideas. Eowyn stabbing the Witch King in the face. That would have been cool. Arwen rushing Frodo to Elrond. That didn't happen. The one that I really wanted that you guys poo pooed and I was super disappointed about Tariel healing Keely. <laughs> I think that could have been pretty strong. Yeah, we made the wrong call there, eh? No. Oh my god, I forgot. Everybody give theirs back. The fourth suggestion on the list after those three was triple panel of Eowyn stabbing the Witch King in the face and Arwen rushing Frodo to Elrond and Tariel healing (laughs) Keely. I think we should have gone with that one. The Eye of Sauron peeking in at a babes of Middle-earth slumber party where a pillow fight is happening. Oh my god. (laughs) <laughs> we should make playmats for a living, guys. <laughs> Mirror of Galadriel with what looks like a convention event in it. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been so God, bad. these are so ridiculous. Uh, the boring. wheel of a bike with a bunch of cards in the spokes. A hobbit-themed wedding. I'm going to skip this next one. Denethor and Boromir pushing Faramir towards a large wheel of spokes. <laughs> <laughs> that one would be amazing. <laughs> a bunch of heroes different. of Middle Earth fighting to sit in the seat of the steward. That's a good one. That has good thematic uh, card sense. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Council of Elrond. All the characters are eating chips while Boromir is trying to talk. <laughs> <laughs> Witch King saying the game is dying while Eowyn stabs him in the face. <laughs> Dream Chaser wrecked on a rocky shore. Three heroes walking away from it towards Umbar. That's totally a reasonable one. Boromir right. riding a Mumak. Glowing bashing an orc in the head with a giant bag of money. Glowing versus Boromir. I remember we talked about that one yeah. for a while. <laughs> that was that a was, strong contender. That was high on the list for a while. Yeah, where we were going to have Boromir and Glowing facing off. Um, heroes versus Hill Troll, which we ultimately went with. And then Heroes versus Sudden Put Pitfall. Wow, I'm really glad that we went in with a with a voting <laughs> so system. So am I. You know? <laughs> Otherwise, but, it would have for sure been triple panel. I, I found the email, and I've got a, a, a little sample I'm going to put in the chat of what she sent originally. Yes. <laughs> Go on, then. Well, I should say right now, while we're waiting, um, Custom Mouse Pads is the company we went through to get these, and they were amazing to work with. So that there is what was originally sent. I know this isn't going to go well on the audio podcast. So my email was, uh, I do have one oh, odd yeah. request that's probably going to sound a little odd. How <laughs> <laughs> okay, you doubled down on the descriptor? Yeah, yeah, yeah very uh, odd. The characters were picked by the podcast guys, and the troll is one of the podcasters inspired by a pick of them in a bright orange Speedo. I'm not going to subject <laughs> to that. I've suffered enough seeing it. So could you make the trolls like off very orange? <laughs> um, 
what I would like as the next playmat is that email printed on the playmat <laughs> for the rest of my life. I'll just send it to you. I'm not kidding. I want you to forward me that email. <laughs> uh, that's funny. I promise I, like, I won't uh... email the artist. Brian, you should make your desktop wallpaper just that picture of the troll's crotch there. <laughs> <laughs> It would be a real conversation starter. Like, I'm gonna oh, need that high resier. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think I one of that. Oh, so exciting. It's so cool. And what's really, really, really super tremendously neat, and again, Stokes, like God, we can't thank you enough for this, but thank you once again. Stokes has offered, and this is tremendous, um, as a prize, the original artwork mm. for this play map that we're gonna <laughs> give away to one very special lucky listener. Which, when we when Stokes had first offered it, I immediately tried to finagle every reason in the world why I should get it, but... Uh, well, we're about to leave it. the podcast, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we could... Oh, you know what would be neat? If we if we each had a third of it, and then they would come together to make the complete one. It, it's already in but two bits. To celebrate the art by ripping it up. <laughs> no, but we could kind of cut it with the jagged scissors, like it's like one of those broken heart things that come together and says best friend. <laughs> Aww... <laughs> And what the three of us could get together every once in a while and put it together under the moon of what's that guy's moon again in the Hobbit? That moon. On the Dur- last light Durin. of Durin's day. Durin's day. Right. Wasn't there a special moon though during Elrond's reading? Oh, when he's reading the runes. Right yeah, on the I map. Don't it is, a crescent moon. Yeah, something like that. An autumn day or something. Midsummer's. Anyways, track. we got distracted. We'll cut the art in three. We each get a third. No contest. Sorry, listeners. Bye-bye. Okay, no, what we'll do is next episode, we're going to uh, cook up something special for the farewell episode, uh, which will be the last episode that Brian and myself and Sean will be on. Uh, and one lucky listener is going to win the original artwork. Now, is the original artwork, it's uncolored, I'm assuming. Yeah, Stokes? Yeah, it's it's black and white, and it's in it's in two pieces because it wouldn't fit in my scanner, so I had to do it in two halves. I is hope it's it... me. Is it all jaggy and it fits together in a jagged pattern or a very smooth pattern? It's the straight edge of a piece of paper, Brandon. Oh, okay, okay. I just thought maybe it was more like a more mysterious, like a treasure map or something. You're not using that fancy jagged paper they're selling these days? No. Or you know those scissors no. that everybody loves that cut the sort of funny pattern into the side of the paper? I mean, I mean I brightly can, colored. I can do that if you want. No, but then some of the artwork would have to be going going missing, right? Yep. So I think we'll just leave it as straight edge. Um, so yeah, super Good special. Good call. We're going to come up with an interesting contest. Or maybe we should give one half to two people and then they have to meet. Anyways, maybe... Okay, stop <laughs> overcomplicating this. So that was the swag. I think people were absolutely thrilled with it. And you know what was really heartwarming to me is to see people that had every single piece of swag or some contingent of swag because, you know, it had it'd been meant that they had come for several years. So mm-hmm. it was really, really cool to see that. Also seeing all the people playing on it like the next day or at events, just seeing it out oh, in yeah. the wild was cool. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I think uh, it really was just a tremendous keepsake. That's also functional. You know what I mean? A very functional keepsake. And I, I took two because I'm going to use one to play. But I, once I play, I always rest my hand on the edge of it. And then it starts to create like this lifted piece. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? <laughs> Nobody knows what I'm talking about. Okay. No. Lifted? No. Well, like it kind of doesn't sit flat anymore right on the edge of one part where I rest my hand. Anyways, <laughs> Gandalf Aww. DK in the chat just posted the budgie smuggler. And... It looks pretty red in that picture. Did you send that pic to her? No, I did not. <laughs> he sent it in the email. <laughs> oh. oh, well, no, I think it would. Uh... <laughs> she should probably never would have replied to your email. <laughs> yeah. I just realized you can so see your ass cheek in the harassment. mirror there. Oh, you, you can. can. Oh, wow. That card just has so much depth. Don't look at it any deeper, Chad. <laughs> I don't know why it caught my eye, but you can see his ass cheek. In the Activate the, the response, there. Chad. Activate the response. Uh, okay. That's unbelievable. Okay, Um. so the swag went off without a hitch. Super tremendous. It was heavy, and we got to say a huge <laughs> thanks. It was heavy. It was to heavy. Bogey. 
who not only he's not just the man, he's the man, but he was also so critical in terms of like the logistics of getting the damn swag to be stored temporarily in the VIG room. The yes. VIG room was funny, you know, because you really weren't supposed to go in there. And I, I was like the Juan of the VIG room. I went in three separate times. Uh, and it, each time it was exciting and heart pounding. I really <laughs> enjoyed it. But essentially, Bogey had the ability to store heavy things at, at the convention. And we leveraged that power greatly. Yes, so thanks did. to Bogey for doing so. And being such a trooper about it. It's not like we were even easy about it. We were... We were, it was tough sometimes to coordinate it all. So Absolutely. many thank you, sir. Uh, okay, so let's now just cut into the Gen Con business. You guys want to talk about the quest first? Sure. Okay, we, so we, we played. Can. Yeah, let's do that, right? Let's do <clears throat> it. Um, Did either of you or any of you play in the event before the event that we played in? Yeah, I did. The, yo, okay, I, so you played. I sure did. Right, right. And. Uh, it's a toughie, you know, you would expect it to be a bit of a toughie, and I think it's particularly difficult in multiplayer, eh? What do you think, Sean? Do <laughs> you think it's tough? <laughs> <laughs> Sean, yeah, I'm curious. I haven't heard what you think about this yet. Uh, you know, I feel like I've gone on this rant so many times. <laughs> I w- we should have recorded the original pure, unadulterated rage. <laughs> <laughs> It was funny because I was like, "Oh, he's joking. He's not. Is he joking? I hope he's nope, joking. no." You know, there's that like moment of panic where, like, is this turning serious? I think if Caleb had been closer, punches would have been thrown. Yeah, I think so too. It was mm-hmm. it was pretty intense because what was it? Like everything got shut down, Sean. But well, it was yeah, oh, see, the ability out... to heal. Like, okay, okay. God, that was funny. yeah. So let me let me preface by no, saying not I've loved. Like, it was not good. I've loved every Gen Con quest up to this point. I don't have a problem with hard as long as hard is interesting. But it turns out, guys, when I'm playing a card game, I'd like to be able to play the cards that I have. Interest. Oh, you can set them on the table. Done. You just can't do anything with them. <laughs> oh, yeah. So that was that yeah. was really funny to see. Not funny, but it was interesting to see Sean sort of... <laughs> the, it, it, I think I'm I'm such a grump like ass that. about that now, too. It was it was in slow motion. It was in slow motion as it, it was like that card does, and you could see the synapses firing yep. and looking at his card, then looking at the other card. Oh god, that was brutal. Yeah, okay. Did so I, I even, brought. I, brought I think my... I warned you, right? I don't recall if I got any specific. It, I just heard that it shuts a lot of things down. I don't think anyone right. mentioned the healing. So surprise, surprise! I brought my Gloin deck, the cornerstone of which is my ability to heal. That's critical. <laughs> it's kind of kind of important. And uh, there's a location. Uh, there's two copies in a four-player game, and there's surge trains abound. So you're going to see it. Uh, and while it's in the staging area, you can't heal more than one damage in a single action. Is it in play or in the staging area? Or is it one per round? It's one per round. Yeah, so if it was with one yeah. action, that, that would be a thing. It's while it's in the staging area. But the hitch is you have to get to quest stage three in order to even travel there you can't location control it you can't address it in any way except if you happen to have a thrower's key out when it came into play that was funny too is it like peeled you like an onion it's like oh sean you only get to heal once per turn and you're like oh okay well let's travel there it's like we can't travel there until stage three (laughs) it's like okay well did did someone have location control oh no you can't put progress there either so sorry yeah, I think someone was saying Thor's map would work with it, though, because of the way it was worded. And I actually didn't realize that I think until it said after it Gen Con. can't leave the staging area. Well, see, no, no, that's right. Thor's map would work to get it in the active location slot, but it, it but it says... It couldn't put progress on it. Progress no, no, cannot be it placed said, there. But it says progress can't be placed there while it's in the staging area. And that's the part I missed. Oh, it's a it's, staging area? Or uh, I thought it's Because it says, play. when it's in the staging area, progress can't be placed here, blah, 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 blah. So I just assumed you couldn't make All it the right. active location because you couldn't place progress, but it's no longer well, in the staging area. Super but there's two of them, so it didn't matter. Yeah, super secret tech. You heard it here. Bring Thor's shit. Yep. But yep. you only you still only can travel to one. 
It, well, go ahead, Charlie. I'll let you continue ranting. I got I, my. Own. I don't know. My salt level has gone down since the moment. I was very, very upset. Uh, Sean, in the it moment. has to go down by default, otherwise blood would be coming out of your pores. <laughs> your salt level only went down because you directly confronted Caleb about it. I wasn't gonna bring that up, but yeah. oh my god, he hit him! It was really violent. <laughs> when he first punched him out, I was like, okay, maybe he deserved that. But it's when he got on the floor and started choking him. That's oh my god! Scared. And he pulled that nightstick on him. Mm. Mm-hmm. And a tea bag. And then for he was good taking measure. the selfies, the selfies, the unconscious <laughs> selfies. I'm going to jail, but it's worth it. <laughs> yeah. Any jury would find the murder just. <laughs> it's true. You'd have to make them play for a couple of years to come up to the point that you know they would truly understand how mind fryingly frustrating it is. <laughs> it anyway, was fun, though. I don't, I don't feel like that terrible. statement required the dose of reality you just gave it. <laughs> what? <laughs> Well, you see, for the jury to really understand, they'd have to play it for a couple of years. And really understand Your the fundamentals Honor. of the game. <laughs> yes, Sean, the voice. <laughs> Your Honor, I'd like to request a three-year recess to get these <laughs> noobs up to snuff with the game. Well, I'm just saying, you couldn't really... I'm not stop. going. I'm not, I'm not going down this rabbit hole with you. <laughs> Anyways, um, Ultimately, what it got... was for me is that I didn't find that particular brand of difficulty interesting, so it was just an unfun experience. We had a rough. That's where I wanted to go. Set to. of cards, though, because we started with Festival des Enemies, and then it was like all the lands came out on the next turn. So we really didn't get a, a fair. Well, there's no such thing as fair in life. We didn't get a good distribution of cards. You know, yeah, and like I we, think we had eight enemies in the first turn. Eight enemies. More and more, I just, I just think that with the way surge is used and the way, especially treachery scale, like Lord of the Rings is a two-player game that you can play four-player or solo. Uh, yeah, I think we've, um, I we talked about that a few episodes ago. I think that it's like four-player gets would agree. so swingy, so swingy, right? Yeah. But yeah, four players yeah. tough. Four players tough. Two player I find is just uh, it's faster and smoother, and yeah. solitaire is even better because then you could cheat like crazy. <laughs> well, it's good. Two player is better than four player for one reason I like is because if you lose right away, it's really easy just to set back up again and go. Where like a four player game to lose on the second turn, you're probably an hour into the game by the time you get to your second turn. You know, where a two player game. You know, twenty minutes maybe. Yeah, if that. Yeah. So, uh, so as far as the quest itself goes, so what? What were the big things that it shut down? Because it kind of shut down all the power decks. Well, there were some like you can't ready characters this round. Yeah. No. Stuff. Yeah. So uh, there was a location that shut down healing or greatly yep. throttled healing to the point of might as well having been shut down. Um, you one ready that gave through... plus one. Go on. Oh. Okay, one that gave plus one threat for the each ally controlled by the player with the most allies. So if you're thinking, oh, I'll bring a deck that has tons of willpower, well, that location immediately negates that. That's a happy gone, very gone, though, if once you travel there. That's true. Um, then what? You can't ready through card effects, and shoot, what was that? There's one? one when you play an event in yes. the quest phase or any phase. It sucks your event out of your deck, so you can't recur it. Yeah. So I so, had test, I had test of wills and dwarven tombs, but I couldn't play it because the test of wills kept getting sucked into the staging area. And, and God, it and that those locations are fine if it didn't lock you out of addressing them. That was my big thing. Like, okay, fine, shut well, down, shut down the big the big power decks. That's fine. It's Gen Con, whatever. But at least let me play around it a little bit. I know. And there's even a card that says each player has to find a location or discard an ally or reveal a card reveal an encounter card maybe mm-hmm. and then when you get to the second stage you have to go find more locations so i'm like wow we're playing a four player game and there's cards that make you find locations and a quest card that makes you find locations isn't it, and isn't you it, can't place progress on those locations reveal well, a location or engage an orc i can't remember but it was there was lots there of ways was... to put locations in the staging area and in a four player game Yikes! And just did like... you guys mention the treachery that was a four for one? Oh, like, is yeah, that, is well... that the one we were just talking about, where like one card becomes four? It's doomed, yeah. it, it, and it has doomed one. Oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> I know, <laughs> right? I'm doomed. Hi, I'm four cards in one. Doomed. Maybe Caleb's trying to tell you something. You're doomed. 
One of my, I one thing I will give a, a positive nod to though is uh, there's a treachery in there that um, so you deal one damage to each exhausted character, and then I think each damaged character can't ready or gets negative willpower for the round. Negative uh, reduced willpower by one. I yeah, mean. and yes. yes, what it's called, the necromancer's rage. <laughs> yeah, yeah. no, that's that was super a cool tight. Corset nod. I th- Bard Lee said that that card right there ended his games a couple times. It ended one of ours at Gen Con because I think our threats all went up by twelve. Yeah, on that one turn. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we ultimately threaded out, didn't we? Was like the technical reason why we lost. Yeah, we lost. There was many, we lost many reasons. Thread out. Mm-hmm. Um, that we couldn't read the cards through the tears. That's it. Yeah. yeah. But you so know I'm, what? Uh, we shared a wonderful experience together. We're talking about it. It was an emotional roller coaster. So mission accomplished. That's the Gen Con quest. <laughs> That's and you true. ultimately beat it, did you not, Sean? Yeah, well, with an asterisk. Yeah, I played it three Why? or four times and then swore that I wasn't going to play it again because I just wasn't having fun. And uh, then at one point we were all sitting around playing games and there was a bit of a lull and I look over at Ian and he looks at me and we're like, all right, we're doing this. So we, we played it two-player with that stupid Boromir Gandalf deck that I built for you. And Ian Stupid, brought Sean. Interesting choice of words. And Ian brought a Noldor deck, and <laughs> it was it was a marathon, but we ended up beating it. Yeah, you guys played a long time. Yeah, yeah, it was a long time. So I got think the two, w. I think epic I think mode I two player out. games would be fun. Epi- oh, yeah, yeah, where you're actually like sitting side by side by side with the people. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Two, three two-player games, I think that would be an absolute right. And why don't they just do that for Gen Con? If they're going to make a quest really that hard, would it be that hard to, well, instead of having one big group of 12, have two groups of six? I think ultimately what we learned this year is is that hard is not what we're looking for at Gen Con. We're looking for interesting things that can't be done in smaller groups, and that's kind of the, the point of that event. Um, so, like, God, Belagos to me is still the high mark. Like, it's, it's really yeah. hard. That is a really hard quest. But... It was fun. It has a really cool dungeon crawly. It felt very Gen Con, just in yeah. its theme. Uh, Prancing Pony, I, I would put up there too. Both great scenarios. Oh, Prancing Pony is so Love good. the pony. So, like, that that's just what it gets down to for me. Is just like, okay, I like hard up to a certain point, but I also, like, I'm here for fun. I think that yeah. quest was just made for a player type that is not my type. Well, no group one, and I think... I don't really like that statistic, you know? You would have liked to have heard, like, a third of the groups won or came really close. Instead, it was no groups won ever all weekend. I think that that quest is beatable. eh. I just think it requires a level of coordination that is impossible for an event that basically requires you to go as a pickup group. Well, (laughs) and and it's noisy, and it's really noisy. So when you're, like, screaming down to that last group, it's tough. Yeah. Uh, but all art Celeborn is goddamn amazing. Thing. Yep. So good that Sean stole mine. I <gasps> I have it. I'm holding it in trust. Oh, okay. Oh. Which is essentially as good as having it. <laughs> oh, I was ecstatic it was Celeborn because that was I brought a Sylvan deck to play with you guys, so I got to use it right then and there. No, it was uh, which was my experience last year with Altar Boromir, and it's yep. fun to immediately bust it onto the table. Yep. It's beautiful. Sean, do you want to talk about the deck, or or what are your feelings on it? <laughs> sure. Why don't you lead? Okay. okay. So what had happened? Uh, I needed a deck for Gen Con, and I was thinking, and it was just in sort of the thought process, a full deck would potentially be a Boromir Gandalf Mary deck, and so. Oh, I didn't have the time to do it, but I basically laid out the skeleton to Sean, and he created what ended up being deck. Uh, you're, he's cutting Friends out. Friends of the heroes. What? Yeah, Brandon, you're cutting out a little bit. Hold on. Yep. Yeah. 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 Sorry, hang on. Um, At this point, I'm convinced he's doing it on purpose. <laughs> I think we. I think we just stab. I think that. I think we just stab. <laughs> okay, so I'll, I'll step in since he can't defend himself now. Remember talking about him? I have a, I have a very different memory of how this went down. I remember. No, Sean. No, my computer's fine. <laughs> no, you've lost your chance. Sean, proceed. <laughs> I, I recall the the nugget, the kernel of this idea, just coalescing in some random ass group chat. Uh, one of the many that were involved in, I think it was the Star Realms chat. 
where you're just like, oh, I am going to play Boromir, and I want to be Gandalf guy. Is such a thing possible? And playing my part as ever, I'm like, well, probably. <laughs> Here I thought you had this joyous experience of deck crafting, <laughs> and it was more just a proof of concept. <laughs> well, I mean, it came out remarkably well. It beat Dol Guldur. Yes, it did. It's very playable. I'm really thrilled that we finally had a chance to collaboratively build the deck, Sean. <laughs> yes, it was it was joyous. Sick collab, bro. Uh, the usage of Mary in that quest was so powerful because a lot of the enemies had high threat, you know? So I was reducing my threat by four. Threat was not a problem for this deck, even though it starts out pretty high, what with Gandalf and Boromir doing his thing. And man, is Gandalf powerful. Yep. Having been the first time I had played with him in any kind of real sense, like I had played on Octagon just as a little practicey practicey, but he's so strong and those sort of like pipe shenanigans, holy lifting. It's really, really, really good. Yep. If you've never played with Gandalf, and I don't see why you, you wouldn't have, you know, I don't know why I hadn't, uh, give him a go. But it's not simple. You know, you really need to play to the strength of his putting the card on the top and. Oh, yeah. Zigil Miner is so powerful with him because you can see the card. It's really, really good. Well, I tell you, my one of my current strongest decks right now is Gandalf, Mary Pippin, and it's all pipes. It just revolves around pipes and pipe cards and rearranging your deck and getting cards in for free. Hold up. Is the name of the deck Surgeon General's Warning? No. <laughs> it's Finest Weed in the South Farthing. Also good. Also good. I would have also accept... Smoking <laughs> the mask, the mask, the mask. Yep, <laughs> which was such a bad movie when I see it now, but I frigging loved it as a kid. Uh, I, I watched it every day. Movie. Movie. So the cool. mask is Super amazing, movie. but it's a great movie. I, I used to watch that movie daily, almost for a while. The dance scene is the only part I like now. His name is Cuban Pete. That that one. Ah, uh, that's <laughs> the one where they're dancing. Then yeah. When I play my maracas, I go chick chicky boom chick chicky chick, chick, boom chick chick boom chick chick boom. <laughs> Good movie. Good movie. Um. Okay. So that was the the quest. So I only played it one time. Chad, did you play in three separate events or I just played? Two? I ended up playing four. Oh, okay. You played plus four a couple times. of them. We restarted. So I think I played four players six times at Gen Con. That's like a pretty decent chunk of masochism. Yeah. And by the end we were, you know, we knew the quest pretty good, so we were rearranging our decks and we started out great. We were I mean, we were sitting good, but no one said it cuz you don't say it. You know yeah. what happens when you say it. But then we revealed the one location that said plus one threat for each ally and I had a Kaldara deck and then we revealed the thing that said each exhausted character gets damaged and minus one willpower and our threat just skyrocketed and we lost. Mm. I mean, we went from totally in control to losing in one staging. Yeah, yeah, that was that, that actually that actually reflects our experience because we started out under the gun, but we dug out. Oh, we, I was so proud of us. We got mm-hmm. we got Boromir up and rolling. I I had toys for Boromir in my Gloin deck, and we just got him up and going with ranged and sentinel oh, inside yeah. of like turn two. Cleared the board of enemies and yeah, still lost enemies. within two more turns, just because yep. of how ridiculous everything scales. Warmir normally is is just broken. On that game, he wreaked havoc on the encounter deck. Like, he was out of control. It was ridiculous. When you have two people really focusing on maximizing his abilities, uh, it, it, just gets, it just gets nuts. Um, okay, so that... It was an experience. Would you agree, Sean? Now that the salt has worn off... It was an experience, right? That you'll talk about with your children forever. <laughs> I was there. You know, you'll you'll discuss. <laughs> I was there. Yeah, the I mean, battle. I, I put up the W, so I don't know. I don't know if I'll play it again. I don't know if they're going to do a new quest for the Fellowship event or if they're going to run Dol Guldur again, but we'll, we'll see. It's the same uh, one, I think. Caleb said it's the same. It probably will be the same. Yep. God, imagine you go to a Fellowship event, you're like, oh, I'm kind of a casual player, and then you just go. and I've got my core set like, in three. Fine three adventure packs yeah yeah you've got like your mono tactics corset deck sorry timmy grab your ankles and let's go <laughs> yeah the kid just leaves in tears like the kid <laughs> i crushed in x-wing two years ago um 
That kid got ruined. That was way but you more know than what? two years ago. <laughs> Karmic Star Wars came back to bite me. Uh, Bard Lee, I think it was Chad and I were walking by... Uh, I think Vardane was there too. We are walking by some some Destiny demo areas. Yep. And to my shock, the tables were like void of players. Because people's taste is just, well, you know, it is what it is. So I was like, Bard Lee, I'll show you how to play this. Like I was some kind of Jedi Master <laughs> to my Padawan. And he ruined me. He ruined me. Well, well, I wouldn't say ruined, but he I don't think he was really worried at any point. Which has me convinced that uh, the Force is strong within Bardley. Very I believe that. strong. Yeah. He was like uh, the the chosen one. You know what I mean? Like, I was like, well, in Destiny, you... And he's like, no, I've got it. And it was his first time playing. But I think it's very dangerous for him at this age to start picking up the game. He's too old now. Star Wars reference. Too okay, old. so in terms... What? <laughs> Nothing. Go. <laughs> in terms of... Uh... <laughs> Oh, God, you know what? It's like, you must sign in, even though I wasn't previously signed. Oh, you can just close that window. Man, we started out Gen Con so strong. Let's talk about getting there. So my trip there this year was so much smoother. The car functioned flawlessly. Uh, It was really a tremendous, tremendous drive. Uh, The border agent going into the U.S. Americas, normally I find going in, they're a lot nicer. I had the complete opposite experience this year. Going in, the dude had no time. Like, he was he was kind of mean. Um, so, anyways, cross the border. Dude was a little bit mean. I start feasting immediately on all the goods of America. I can't believe you guys have, it's like, two items for $3 or two items for $5 of higher, oh, yeah. higher oh, yeah, value man. at McDonald's. It's insane. Prices, prices at fast food restaurants have gotten so low that yeah. the individual franchises are complaining because they can't make any money, but they have to offer those dollar menu items. Mm-hmm. It's it's so crazy. So I was just like sniping menus, eating all these little things that cost essentially nothing. But I will say this. If you ever get to come to Canada, order a McChicken. Our McChicken is superior to your McChicken. Whoa. And it's the one... The one thing that Canada might have an edge on America over. Ours is a lot more meaty, our McChicken. Hmm. Yeah. But otherwise, you guys got to beat hand, hands down. I'm not I'm not some kind of Canadian turncoat here. I'm staying loyal to America. Brandon, uh, have you ever ate at a Rally's or maybe a Checkers? I think you know. Yeah, you would love either one yeah. of them. For like yeah. $4, for $4, you get enough food to feed two people. Oh, I, I see that as a challenge. I think it's I, better than Steak and Shake. Really? Mm-hmm. Too. Yes. Oh, the, it's much more flavorful. Yeah. Why are we talking about this now when it's too late? I didn't. <laughs> Next no, year, I, bro. Yeah, there were a couple down there that we spotted. I think Next there was year. a rally's right by our hotel. All right, Wasn't we'll go there? there next year. Yeah, I think you're right, actually. Yeah. Uh, so we get there, and I linked up with Chad and Vardane, which was awesome. And then we immediately met mm-hmm. my sort of goal of going to Twin Peaks. And man, oh man, like talk about a delivery on expectations. It was mm-hmm. so great. It's like this big, crazy <laughs> hunting lodge and these lumber gills and oh my God. And the beer, they put it in like some cryostasis unit. It was yep. so cold. 29, oh de- 29 degrees. Right. Which is very, very cold. You know, yep. very, very cold. And uh Wow. That was just such a great way to start Gen Con. Tremendously fun. The waitress yeah. was hugely helpful. She guided us towards all the best dishes and steered us away from a few landmines. She really did. She did a great job. She's like, no, that, that's actually pretty terrible. Don't eat that. I'm like, oh, okay. I shall not. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, she was uh, she was super, super nice. But yeah, we had a great time right out the gate. Like, And, our, and uh, oddly enough, our hotel... Twin Peaks was essentially in this in the parking lot. Oh, oh here we go! Here we go! Here it is! Let's talk about this for a moment. I don't get it. <laughs> so, what happened was Chad was giving the guys instructions to no, where no, we were. No, here's what happened. <clears throat> here's what happened. Don't let, don't let Brandon tell the story. <laughs> oh, don't let the truth get out? Fake news, guys, coming up. <laughs> Brian... Oh, boy. <laughs> What? That's too soon or what? Yeah, yeah it's too... definitely too soon. Oh, okay. Current. Sorry, in Canada we joke yeah. about it. 
So Brian, Dave, and I all rode in luxury in a conversion van from Minnesota. And uh, as we arrived in Indianapolis, they were dropping Dave and I off at the hotel that we were sharing with Brandon and Chad. And uh, so I was I was in a flurry of communication with both Chad and Brandon. Brandon was getting increasingly drunk and more persistent that we needed to go to Twin Peaks. <laughs> and Chad was doing his I best just to give to us I wanted to share directions. the love, man. I wanted yep. you to experience the grandeur. So I, I don't think people realize what it's like to try and have a serious conversation when Brandon is also texting in the same conversation. <laughs> it's fine. So, I had full texting drinking. abilities in America. So at some point, as we're, we're getting close to the area where our hotel is at, uh, Chad says... Uh, it's, it's, it's in, the, it's basically shares the same parking lot. No, 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 no. We'll get there. Accurate. So, so as we're pulling up to the thing, I'm all right. Hey, there's the twin peaks. Let's just go there. Cause it's, it's in the parking lot. So we get to, we pull into the twin peaks. <laughs> or the, <Which> the... <laughs> mission accomplished boys. <laughs> no hotel to be found at all. We were lied to. So poor Brian and Justin, who are driving us, are anxious to get to their own damn hotel. And they're like, where, where is your hotel? So we're quick f- searching and in a flurry to actually find the thing. We drive around for a little bit. And it is across the interstate from the Twin yep. Peaks. But you can see it. You can see it, right? So immediately yes. we're all just like, f- Chad. God, it's not it's not in the parking lot. We've been on the road for like 11 hours. Yes. We're, we're, we're antsy crabby. as hell. We're ready to be apart from each other. I, be- I believe Nick's exact words he told me later was, I haven't even met the guy and I already hate him. <laughs> that was definitely, that was oh definitely the God. spirit of the so, car in so that moment. Venom. So it, start, it started becoming a thing where it was just like, oh, hey, where's the convention center? Oh, it's in the same parking lot as the Twin Peaks. It's, it's, it's right <laughs> So everything was in the same parking lot as the Twin Peaks. Uh, so this continues I... for, what, two, two-thirds two of days. Gen Con? Yeah, at least two days. <laughs> some some amount of time. And Brandon, what triggered you to finally say something? <laughs> well, because it was like the 19th time that you guys were taking the piss out of Chad, and he issued like what seemed to be a genuine apology. I'm like, oh no, this guy's actually starting we, to feel We had bad. gaslighted him I to the point started... where he thought he had done it. <laughs> the, the apology started with, I don't remember saying that, but if I did, I'm oh, sorry. You gotta imagine, every time they roasted you, Chad, I, and every time you did it, now, moms and dads, close your kids' ears, because I'm about to say a, a bad word, but every time they gave you a hard time, I, I would always just say, Chad. That's all I would add to the conversation. <laughs> but Sean, I believe my original text, and you could go back and refer to this because text messages are written down, was it's essentially in the same parking lot. Essentially in the same parking lot. I, I thought mean... the whole point of the confusion was that you spoke to Brandon on the phone and he said it was in the same. No, he spoke Not... to me on the phone and all I said was, Sean, get here. It's amazing. Here's Chad. I yeah, talked here's... to Sean and said... You can see the Twin Peaks sign from the hotel. When you get off the expressway, Twin Peaks will be on your right. Turn left and then turn on the first street. And that was confused by the text message that I got from Brandon. Here we go, verbatim. Yes. Oh, here we are. Um, let's see here. Uh, so I asked, did Chad leave us keys? Brandon replies, they can make you some, I'd guess. We are so damn close, though. It is basically in the parking lot. Basically. Ooh. Look at that very important word. Yeah, Basically, is it in that what? I can see it? I can yeah. see it. From when you're where giving you directions, got to this one, Sean. When, when, I'm you're, sorry. when you're giving it's directions, the margin of error is like it's a nil. block away, but it's separated by an interstate. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's not basically in the parking lot. Can I ask you guys a yes or no question? Can you see it from the parking lot of our hotel? That's not what you said. Basically, same parking lot. That's not no. What... Plus, you can't see it. You can see the sign. I was actually going to defend you, but you now should've... that you're doubling down on this, I'm done. <laughs> well, I'm just, I'm just happy that my good name has been cleared. Okay, wait, wait, last. wait, wait. So I've never actually heard. What did Brandon say to clear this up? Because all of a sudden, I think I heard... at some point, I... I think at some point he looked at me and he's like, "Well, we're joking, right? <laughs> Are we gonna tell him what did happen?" Um... I was. 
I was you, sitting at one table. You guys were across at a different table. And all of a sudden, I just heard Sean go, oh, my God, Chad, I owe you a effing apology. Like, okay. Because <laughs> I was I keeping my distance. I was like, you I've know been keeping my distance the, text, the whole right? time. Yeah. <laughs> it is brutal. And I did send you a massive flurry of text, Sean. I'm looking back here now. And it's yeah. like one every two to three minutes saying, hurry up and get here. Yep. And that doesn't relent for almost an hour and a half. And it was really yes, fun when we were just stuck time. in the car without the ability to get there. Yeah, it's that's like, true. Though you did have my back, though. You had beers ready when we finally got to the beer garden. Yes. Yeah, they were ready to rock and roll. Let's talk a little bit about the beer garden. The Gen Con beer this year, I would rate it as excellent. Excellent. I enjoyed it. Yeah, really, really good kind of sweet so you didn't want to like keep hitting it all night but if you were going to have like one or two you would super duper enjoy it what was it called again golden dragon golden yeah yeah and it was a golden ale and it was it did have that a belgian style belgian ale. taste yeah 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 it had that spicy belgiany taste so it was really good uh so we finally all linked up and we partied on that wednesday night <clears throat> nothing of real significance happened then well, and then on to no, no something significant no, happened was... Yeah. The closure. The Yard of Ale? Yeah. Oh, the closure. That's right. Yep. We go to, you know, like, what makes a night better than going to Twin Peaks? Going to Twin Peaks and then the Tilted Kilt, which I'll call by its correct name now. I'm so emotionally scarred. <laughs> it was closed forever. Yeah. Forever. Which I think was because of the negative reviews that you guys issued on this very podcast. Forever. You gotta imagine oh, when I was looking yeah. through the window Boom. as like it was starting to hit me that it wasn't really open, like it was closed forever. It's like someone pranked me a few years ago and was like, "Oh, Steak and Shake is closed." You know, it was the same level of just utter, utter heartbreak. <laughs> but, but yeah, the, the nothing the tilted no, kilt is gone. Nothing takes the sting off the heartache of a closed tilted kilt better than a round of vampire tacos. Yeah, God, Sean, one of your lines that was my favorite. <laughs> yeah <laughs> why are they called vampire tacos and then sean i think your answer was because the cheese is melted like the frilly cape around its neck <laughs> what <laughs> you referred to a taco's neck oh my god it was really funny but those well, vampire tacos are so good it's ridiculous <laughs> absolutely ridiculous yeah how many did you guys eat i ate i ate four on the weekend uh, for the whole weekend, yeah, I think I had four or yeah. five. Yeah. Or did I have? Did I have five? Four yeah, you, or five? You had a yard of ale that you did not need. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Yeah, that was. Uh, you know what that is? It's classic Brandon Wednesday Gen Con ac- excitement. It's not the first time that things have gone off the handle on a Wednesday. <laughs> but we managed to drag our butts out of bed on the Thursday and head in. Oh. The line party that didn't exist because there's no oh, need yeah. for the line party to exist. The wheel call line was nothing. Yes. Nothing. And we just strutted up like gods. It was no problem at all. Um, Are we going to have some, like, every other year snapback thing? Like, last year the line was so bad that everybody, maybe they uh, opted to have their passes sent to them. But now next year, everyone's going to be like, well, it wasn't bad last year, so right. I'm wait in line. I'll save, uh, ten, I I'll save $10. Not. I hope not, because I uh, I have no choice but to do will call. Um, but the line was cake. It was absolutely You'll cake. have a choice next year. It, who, me? Oh, yeah, you can't get it shipped to you? They don't ship to Canada? No, you, they, they don't ship internationally. Oh, well, if, you're, you if you're international, you have no choice. I mean, that's why I did my set to Brian. Uh, yeah, Brian. other smarter people in the, on this recording were able to figure it out. Mm-hmm. Oh, I could just have it sent to one of you guys. Oh, that's true. Send okay. it to me. I will send it to you, B. Okay. Um, if only so Brian can get smug with the post office lady. Yes. <laughs> Any opportunity to go shove it in that lady's face again, and I am all for it. What did you <laughs> shove in her face? Pride. Okay, do you want to tell this story? or? <laughs> so I got my pass uh, about a week before Dave's, Stokes's supposedly arrived. Um, I got a, a note, as they are typical to do, that said that uh, they tried to deliver a package, but it requires a signature. No one was home, so I had to go pick it up from the post office. Went and got mine, no problem. Stokes yeah. was then asking about a week later about, you know, where is his pass? You know, I I haven't seen it yet. He's, he's starting to get a little nervous. 
So he goes online and he checks and he sees that there is a confirmation from the tracking number that it was attempted to be delivered. So we confirmed that I was on the mailing address as best we could, but I had never received any sort of note about it. Um, so I went to the post office to just say, like, are, um, do you guys happen to have a package? Uh, I never got a notice about this, but I, I'm pretty sure, according to this tracking number, that it got delivered. And this lady was like, you, she just didn't believe me. She thought I was just feeding her a line and, you know, whatever. So I pull up the tracking number and she wants me to show her on my phone the tracking information. I was like, I didn't do that. I just took a screenshot of the tracking number so I could give it to you if needed. Okay. Well, <laughs> what's the address? So I tell her the address. I give her the tracking number and she's like, all right, I, I guess I'll go take a look. And so she goes around back and I hear like shuffling and some things moving around. And then I just hear silence for a second. And then like one more little rustling of paper. And I, in my mind, I'm thinking, got her. <laughs> <laughs> she sticks her head around the corner. And she goes, what was the name on that again? And I was like, it's going to, going to be Dave Stokes. Yep, it's right here, just like you thought. She totally turned it around. I was not happy with her. Wait, she didn't turn it around? All of a sudden she was nice? That turns it around? Well, she tried to turn it around. Oh, okay. I was having none of it, though. I burned that post office right to the ground. (laughs) Fair punishment. Yeah. I just went outside, (laughs) cut my brake lines, and lit it on fire. Gas line, not brake lines. (laughs) I was like, wait, hang I on. Don't, I don't think lighting brake fluid does very much. <laughs> I have a feeling it's heat resistant. I was trying to think. You're like pushing the car and it won't stop. Maybe <laughs> hit the building. I, was, I couldn't figure out how that was working. The brake juice actually put the fire out several times. <laughs> Boys, we did 7x7s seven seven at some point. I've lost the timeline now. And brake, brake juice. We did 7x7s seven seven in the most ridiculous fashion possible. It was so, so bad. Where I, I think ultimately ended up being seven of us doing seven by sevens. So yep. it was a 49 patty delivery to the table in one shot. Yep. It, was, it was so gross, but beautiful in the same same sort of way. And our waitress was so damn funny. She was really, really like... Oh my God. Didn't take crap from no one type gal. The way she and... pressured Casey into getting that seven by seven so none yes. of us had to lift a finger. <laughs> Mr. Trench was not keen to have uh, a 7x7. Seven seven. I think he wanted to have some, like, soft three-patty burger or something like this. Maybe but a salad. She, she just twisted his arm <laughs> for... Well, actually, didn't twist his arm. Well, she broke his Basically balls. Basically rallied everybody else to make fun of him <laughs> until he finally agreed to get the 7x7. Seven seven. It was like, you know, he, she was going to send a picture home to mommy and stuff. Like, she was rough. She just savaged him. But you notice she didn't give give Dave G a hard time at all. She was like, oh, okay, no problem, hon. Dave G, no problem. But she was a bully to Trench. It was savage. <laughs> it was super savage. Uh, was it Chris Jackson was there with us that finished, like, in no time seconds. at all? Yeah. Yeah. Like, he basically was like, and it was gone. Yep. I finished. Uh, Sean, you finished, right? I did. I remember, it was harder this year than I remember it last year. I think they you put know what? And they on. also didn't put toppings on it this year. They had toppings on it last year. Did they? There was lettuce, tomato, uh, pickles. There was toppings on it, and definitely mustard. They because just... remember mustard got and, all of it. Oh them. yeah, you're and, right. They nah, did have de- mustard on. and mayonnaise for sure. I didn't go this year. I wasn't part of the seven by seven. Yeah, they yeah, replaced well... all of those other toppings with more cheese. Yeah, more meat and cheese. Oh, that's right, Chad. Because you were worried that there wasn't going to be enough napkins. So no. you, you no, I brought my, I brought my own this year. <laughs> yeah, the roll of paper towels. That was funny. Did you bring that, or did somebody? Oh no, that? I brought it. I brought it. God, now that we're talking about, it, I kind of want to eat one. But I'm having a like September cleanse because August was not pretty. It was really really rough. <laughs> After Gen Con, I just yeah. couldn't stop the garbage train. I was just like, oh my god, it's in me now. But I've managed so far for September to be good. Bard Lee showed me possibly the most important comic book I've ever seen in my life. Uh, I don't know if you guys recall this, but he showed me a comic book that had a short story about, I think it was Zippy or Sparky. Skippy. About, 
Skippy. Skippy. Oh, there we go. You put those together, you get it. Skippy. Skippy, who was a droid in Star Wars. He was actually the red droid that blows up. Come on, Red, uh, let's go. Right, yeah, when he's at the Skywalker Ranch. And the depth of that story is incredible. I'm totally going to spoil it here. It's fine. Um, so essentially what happens is Skippy is a serving droid in Java's palace, Java's palace, and he drops a drink. And he knows that if the drink hits the floor, Jabba's essentially going to have him destroyed. And in that moment, he, like, reaches out with his mind and puts the drink upright and force hovers it over back to his serving tray. Mm -hmm. So then he realizes he's force sensitive and does some, like, thinking about the force. And so he ends up on the, the Jawa sand crawler and ends up essentially committing suicide. But the reason he does it is he realizes if he goes with the Skywalkers, he uses the Force to see into the future and see what a disaster it would be if if R2 never brings the Death Star plans to Leia. And so he uses the Force to kill himself. Isn't that intense? And that's when he blows a motivator. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he actually did that to himself to protect the timeline of R2 making it to Leia. Deep. I know, and so it was so, so utterly life-changing. So I must thank Bardley a billion times for bringing that to my attention. It's such such an intense moment. It's not quite how I had written my personal fan fiction with 3PO, but it still has a Force-sensitive droid, so it's proof that it's true, that it can happen. We demoed the thing. That was fun. Yeah, that was great. Yeah, that was was a thing, it turns out. We, Getting we, into the demo was tough. Yeah, because we, we hovered around there thinking it was like any other demo, just next person hovering sits down. So we sat there. The first game we watched, we sat for probably close to a half hour, right? Yeah, yeah, and I was staring at those iron-on patches that yes. we had. I can't believe they had iron-on patches. And uh, And ultimately, we found out that, no, that was not the case. We couldn't just sit down. We had to sign up. And no, they were full for the next couple days. Mm -hmm. But our man on the inside, good old Dave G. God, he's the savior of Gen Con. He really is. He got us a demo. demo. God, that game was good. God, that game was good. And he couldn't get a demo easily, actually. He went early and they were like, no, you have to wait. And Dave, being the trooper that he is, went back and got us signed up. What a G. That's why people think that's his last name. No. His last name is Smith, but we just call him Dave G. <laughs> <laughs> He's such a G. Um, yeah, so it was a fun game. And Sean and I, of course, were utterly suspicious of each other. <laughs> I, You know, Nick, I won his trust. And then it, the, in, in the end, he still didn't trust me, which is crazy. <laughs> you guys were so suspicious of me, but this time I was as innocent as innocent could be. Oh, you Who were the infected? Part... It was Ian, I was... which I knew. And I knew Ian was infected. Chad, I had no idea you were infected. There was one other person, right? I got dealt halfway through the game an infected card. So I started right. normal, and then I became an alien. Right. right. I knew Ian was an alien. I don't know why, but I just knew it right from the get-go. He was very contemplative. <sighs> yes. He was, and he was acting like an infected person. <laughs> oh, but God, like, it's thematically just so... On if you're juicy. a fan of that movie, it's exactly what you want it to be. There's blood tests. You can tie people up with ropes. Yep. Yeah. Well, and, and Bardley. Remember what Bardley got? Flamethrower. That's right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Did we end up poor John. Anybody? Oh, well, that's right. We got, the game was, we were running out of time, and Bardley ended up with a flamethrower, and the demo lady was like, okay, well, we're running out of time, so you should probably use it. You can burn someone alive. And he's like, well, Sean. And we had to vote on it, and Sean squeaked through. I voted in favor of killing Sean, BT Dub. I, I voted not to. Error. Because I was also infected, so I... Uh, I was yeah, like, oh. right. Shut up. You had no idea. <laughs> no, I didn't have an idea. But I didn't think we should burn Sean. But then I was like, I thought John was infected, because he was being so quiet the whole game. So I said, burn John. He's been quiet the whole game. And apparently that's all it takes to get roasted alive in the thing. You just If you don't talk... Bardley uh, will burn you to death with a flamethrower. I think we had roast lust at that point. We just wanted to <laughs> roast someone... somebody. You could have voted me. I would have voted burn. in favor of. <laughs> yeah. 
my thumb was in permanently in the up position. I just wanted to see someone get torched. But yeah, yeah it was super fun, and you got uh, an iron-on patch for demoing it with the uh, exploration team sort of jacket patch. So cool. Uh, post 31, yeah. baby. Yeah, really, really, really super neat. I loved it. It was. A I got good uh, bamboozled by a beautiful set of dice made of <laughs> opaline. Those were really pretty, though. I know. Did you see the picture I posted on Facebook? Did it capture their beauty? No, Have you seen it, it can't. John? It can't. Maybe I need to do a video, I'll but go, I'm actually I'll go look at just it again. fondling the the D20 right now. It's weird. It's as if light emanates from the inside of these dice. Yeah, they're That's so cool. amazing, and they were forty dollars, which seems ridiculous to pay for one, two, three, four, five, seven. Six, seven, seven dice. But damn it, like. Now I think I should have gotten four to five sets. I just love them so much. <laughs> I want to give a super brief shout out to Academy Games. Uh, not only are they a wonderful game company, uh, they had a big giant bundle of stuff, like a humongous bundle of stuff listed for $140 US, American. And I was like, well, I don't want to carry around that much stuff all day. So I was like, I'll just come back because they had a huge amount of stock. Anyways, I come back and the price had been cut off and now in pen, it was written $180. And I was like, oh my god. Like, for the sake of not wanting to carry crap, I got hosed. Anyways, I said to the dude, Uwe, who actually owns and the company and develops most of their games, I was like, oh man, it said 140 this morning. And, like, nothing. No problem, Amo. He's just like, I'll give it to you, 140 And he just made the deal happen. He's like, that was our mistake. Super, super cool. I mean, they still got my, like, $230 or whatever. So, you know... That's good, but great that they respected it. Played both games. The Viking game is so fun. If you get a chance to play Vikings, uh, and there's some year attached to it. I guess I could turn my head here. <laughs> 878 Vikings by Academy <laughs> Games. Uh, super fun to play. I know I'm going to like any game that has a year in the title. Mm-hmm. That's my favorite kind of game, legit. If there's a year, I'm basically in. If it's got a year or a country's name in the title, I'm probably going to pass. You didn't like Vikings, Fishba? You know what? You do need the right group for it. You need people that are in the mind of Vikings. Especially the people that are the Vikings and they have the big horde. And then those little... Anyways, we won't get too far into it. Great game. Try it again. I would recommend you try it again. Special listener event was awesome. Yeah? Oh, yeah. It was great. So fun. That's where you revealed uh, the funny custom cards, Chad, that you had. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and it's... Collaboration with Caleb. Do you guys want to um, read those off? You have a link to them? Yeah, do we have uh, images we can show? I was just going to... Uh, I posted them to our Facebook. Okay. Now, it's appropriate that Brandon, your card should have an errata, just like some people think Boromir should have an errata. <laughs> Somehow, Caleb, Caleb typed it, and I just copy-pasted it in. And I think myself and Electron John, who also helped, actually, I shouldn't say helped. He got them printed. He did a ton of work. He's um, the, the driving force. Yeah. I did the art and some of the stats and little stuff, and so did John. But we all missed a word on your card. I think we just assumed it was there. So when you read your card, insert the word other, and I think you know where it goes. I have and urgent beverage. <laughs> yeah. Typos. That's the, That's what I was talking about. Okay, I'm just loading the link up here. And Caleb actually did the stats, which is neat, so it didn't get totally out of control. <laughs> I like it without other, actually, because he takes himself down with everyone else. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I think it's totally fine. I think it's totally fine as is. Okay, I'll read mine. So it's a leadership hero with only seven threat cost, which I'm insulted by. No, but it has... you hate wasted stats. So that's what he was it playing is true. to. It is true. But I feel like I should get bonus threat because of deadliness. Uh, zero willpower, which I love. Three attack, one defense, and three hit points. And it's Brandon. Types are Gondor, Ho- Host, and Gourmand. And there's a picture of me eating a 7x7. Seven seven. And look, there's toppings on it! Yeah, yeah, there it is. Photographic evidence. And it says, resources for Brandon's pool can only be spent on attachments for Brandon. That's fair. And it says, and that's what it should always be. And it, action, raise each player's threat by one to add one resource to Brandon's resource pool. 
That's a great card. Flavor text. Read the flavor text. And the flavor text. Bike spokes. More like shite spokes. Can anyone give me a resource? (laughs) (laughs) So funny. Biggie, why don't you read yours? Um, I am a spirit hero with 10 threat, 3 willpower, 1 attack, 3 defense, and 3 hit points. My fragile ego. I have the types (laughs) Rohan, Host, and Troll. Response after an encounter card is revealed... Discard Brian to cancel and discard that card. Then never play the game again. (laughs) (laughs) With the flavor text. So I think most of you know that I really don't play this game anymore. (laughs) (laughs) Oh God, it's so good. That one's my favorite. Uh, Yeah, It's so damn funny. I really like, I really like the matter of fact, in. Then never play the game. No, again. that's that's legitimate <laughs> yeah. rules language, and it makes it right. even better. <laughs> right yep. then, oh my god, it's so good. Never play the. Oh my god, it's really really good. Sean, read yours. Um, so I'm a ten threat lore hero, two willpower, two attack, two defense, three hit points. Dwarf host and impersonator traded. Action: exhaust Sean to name a card, then quote each line of text from that card accurately. To search your deck for a copy and add it to your hand. Shuffle your deck. Flavor text. Let me see if I remember. <laughs> <laughs> now, Sean, your art, Brian and I's art, so on Brian's, it's probably the most amazing picture I've ever seen anybody. <laughs> where it's him doing a wink and a gun in a suit looking like such a suave G. I'm so Brian, happy I found that picture. Crashing into the 7x7, seven seven, and Sean is just kind of like smirking. Maybe no, what is I've, the story no. with Sean's art here? Let me, hang on, we'll come back to that. I'll find the actual picture that that's from. Or maybe Chad okay. has it on hand. Uh, that's a Gen Con pick, because you're wearing a legendary yeah. lanyard. I don't have it on this computer. It's not on my laptop. It's All on right, my I'll, I'll dig. There's a, there's a thing. Okay. You'll know, Brandon, you'll, rec- you'll recognize the picture. <laughs> there's I was a, going. When you see I'm the rest of the picture, picture, you'll know exactly that's right. why the face I'm wearing. Wow, that was I like that okay. Sean's, Sean's stats are high. I think it's the best part about Sean's card. Oh, the oh, fact that I'm over-costed? Yeah. You know, say, I had to fight Caleb for that. He's like, oh, it's Sean's stats should only equal 9. I'm like, no, 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 no. We have to make Sean's <laughs> stats a 10. Yeah. It has to equal one more than it should because he hates that. <laughs> totally fair. Also, his ability is really powerful. Yeah, yeah I, I would definitely play with myself. Holy crap, a hundred people have liked that post. Wow. <laughs> These cards got mad love. Have yeah. you got the picture there, Sean, or no? No, I'm, or it's in, coming. I'm having to cycle through last year's Gen Con, and there's a ton of pictures. You know, that look kind of reminds me. My wife saw the picture where it's, I'm about to drink the yard of ale, and you're looking at me, and she's like, why does he look so dissatisfied with you? I'm like, that's not my first beer. <laughs> <laughs> the look is really captured well where it's like dude do you really need that well that's that's hilarious because that's exactly the look i was trying to find in a picture i'm like i want one where sean is assumedly looking at brandon with a look of like oh come on man yeah. or give yeah, me a break a, or it's you've got to be yeah i think my wife was like your 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 you you were her spirit animal for a minute because she's she's made that look so many times um, she's it. been down that road can i please read what my favorite comment is from the facebook post oh please do i'm surprised they remembered to make a sean card <laughs> <laughs> as was i oh that's funny I haven't read the comments. I'd three-way that. Oh, excellent. I'm changing that to a love instead of like. (laughs) (laughs) That's so funny. Oh, my goodness. Okay, so, um, yeah, those were awesome. Special listener event was fantastic. It was just great to get together with everybody and, you know, say some farewells and see all the playmats out. And people, like, just got right into it, you know? Like, people know what happens at special listener event, just dove into games. Everyone got some gaming in, so it was really good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, anything you guys want to chime in here? I've got a couple more things. I'm but... surprised you missed CrossFit. Oh, I have CrossFit on my list. Uh, well, I bought that Century Spice Road game, which was really fun, and uh, we were playing it, and two random guys walked up and they said, "Oh, hey, you know, 
this game looked cool. I wanted to play it. So we said, we'll play. And I don't know. What were we playing for? Like half an hour? I mean, it was a while. Yeah, you guys that were was playing pretty time. much the entire time Ian and I were playing Dol Guldur. Yeah. I mean, it was a long time. And all of a sudden, they noticed Brandon's shirt. And they said, the one guy did. And he said, oh, COTR. I listened to that. You guys listen to that? Oh, that was so and Brandon's like, yeah, we listened to it. And I said, <laughs> I said, what do you think of that Brandon host guy? He's kind of a pompous jerk, isn't he? And before the guy could respond, Brandon, by the way, I'm Brandon. Well, <laughs> like, because God, let him reply. My fragile ego was hanging in the balance for a second there, Chad. Imagine the guy was like, yeah, he's a dipshit. I would have died. I would have died. <laughs> So I, just I just assumed you were going to say, nah, that Chad guy, he's, and then we, we would, yeah, but no, no, that, no. that was I hilarious. Him an awkward moment. Imagine he was like, oh yeah, he's the worst part of the show. And then I was like, I'm here. Like, <laughs> no one would have enjoyed that. Nobody. Well, I mean, I kind of would have, but I think the guy would have felt at least awkward a little bit. So. Eh, probably a little. Yep. Mm. But it was, was a great fun game. Cause then he realized he's like, Oh, Oh. And he started realizing our names with the show and, I don't know, because there's, what, over 70,000 people at Gen Con? And we yeah, just that was pretty cool. Pretty cool, just like, uh, to sit down. miniature celebrity moment. Yeah. Deadless was... celebrity. And that's uh, a great that's a great game that I've never won. I've played it quite a few times, and I've actually never won. Oh, and that's rare for you. You win too much. It's and, true. well, once they realized who I was, the guys didn't even look at Thread again. They're like, oh, whatever. At least we know we're going to beat this guy. <laughs> <laughs> so that was a little bit tough. Sean, let's do talk about CrossFit. I think the best part of the whole CrossFit story was the morning where <laughs> I got up. We were, we were at a crossroads. <laughs> we were. We were. I had gone to bed, I think, earlier than you had. Yeah, 1230. Right? Yeah. So I went to bed. I put earplugs in and I got a, a good sleep. I didn't know when I woke up in the morning how long you had been up. Oh, yeah. You know, so, was... so I had no morning plans all of Gen Con except for this. And the night before is when these assholes decide they want to be up all night talking about movies and shit that I might want to participate in. Mm-hmm. I even Jeez. tried to go to bed early but could hear them so clearly through our shitty hotel room door that I just couldn't even sleep. So I was, I think I was up till like, what, like 3 or 4 that morning. I felt bad for right. Nick, speaking of our hotel. Every time I took a piss, which I do very, very often... The lights would come on right above the bed that he was sleeping in, like, just super brightly. Oh, man. Well, yeah, because our our hotel was actually pretty cool because it had two rooms. Yes. Like a living room with a kitchenette. We we didn't know that, plus a bathroom in the middle in between the actual bedroom and that. So we got really lucky there. That was not. (laughs) Oh, it wasn't cramped for five guys in there? No. no, But anyways, I wake up in the morning not feeling great, right? Because I've been eating like crap and staying up a little too late. And I was still kind of feeling the effects of Wednesday. That Wednesday was quite the trip. And so I'm standing creepily, actually, now. If one of the other guys woke up and saw it, it would look really, really weird. <laughs> but I'm standing above Sean with, like, a hand kind of pressed up against my face, thinking, like, do I wake this guy up? <laughs> I really wasn't sure what to do. I'm like, you know what? I'll just sneak away, do CrossFit, like you know he'll live like he won't mind but then i was thinking you know it would be fun so i i decided to softly wake him up and if he was like in a deep trance i wasn't gonna push the issue so i kind of was just like sean sean and then just light light poking and you woke (laughs) up and then uh you know i was good sean i did say like come or do not come Mm -hmm. i lay no pressure upon you Mm mm-hmm and then you were immediately like, you have my sword. <laughs> <laughs> no, you debated it. <laughs> no, I had a hard couple seconds. Luckily, yeah. And then I was like, well, it's it's time to go. So if you're coming, <laughs> I think that level of urgency, you had no choice at that point. You're just like, okay, fine. Yep. Yeah, that helped. I, I've learned because I am I am a bear in the morning. I hate the person I am when I wake up. Same. <laughs> but I've trained myself that when I've committed to doing something when I'm awake, that my tired self just needs to just needs to listen to that, and it doesn't get a say. So yeah, we trust went. trust awake self. So we went, and uh, my I had hurt my quad like days before, and just like such a nuisance. You know, this is two summers in a row where I've had an irritating injury, and uh, so 
I was kind of limited in what I could do, but you were doing squats, right, Sean? Weighted squats to try to find your your five rep max or something, something like that. And it, it's it, that's a tough, like energy intensive thing to it do was. before a workout. I was doing shoulder press. Oh, that's right. Yeah, I did shoulder press, and I wasn't really killing myself. And meanwhile, you were working hard on the the squats. And so then, when we finally got to the wad, uh, which was the actual workout after the strength training. Uh, you know, I can only imagine you were already pretty tired. I was pretty and, thrashed um, at that point for sure. But you were a total trooper and you got through it. And, uh, I was, I was like a proud dad. I don't know if you know, Sean, I was so thrilled. Like, I know, you know, <laughs> your success is yours alone, but I was like, yeah, I know that guy. <laughs> no, I just felt really good about it. God, between... And they had... Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I was just going to say, between the soreness that resulted from that workout, because I don't do strength training on a regular basis. I've pretty much become a cardio guy. So between right. the soreness that came from that workout and the fact that we drank way too much Saturday night, like, Brian, oh, I'm amazed yeah. our friendship didn't end on Sunday morning. <laughs> I made you a were, quick escape. You weren't bad on Sunday. I felt bad. No, you were just quiet i mean <laughs> he was dying on the inside yeah they're really i mean you basically just slept yeah well that sounds about right the the water that they had there because we oh, were probably yeah. so dehydrated it was like this water chiller that it came out of it came out of like this cooling device it was like so it refreshing so i just good. wanted to stay there and drink water <laughs> well did we have the seven no we had the seven by sevens later that day it was, but it we was had, almost immediately after we had been in a high sodium situation, so that water was like the water of life. It was really, really good. Mm-hmm. And I uh, bought a shirt. Love the shirt. I wear it all the time now. Super good. So yeah, Sean survived CrossFit, and uh, good on you for sticking true to the pact. And the place that we were at, if you ever get a chance, you should go check it out. It's called CrossFit Dash Northeast in Indiana. Super fun. Uh, yeah. So then we went in seven by seven. Uh, I'm just looking at my list here. Do we? Oh, Cobra Paw was a fun game. It's this ridiculous party game. Cobra Paw. Yeah, that was the best, like, stop and let's try this moment of the con, mm-hmm. probably. Yeah, yeah. We just happened to be walking by this booth, and there was this game that had, like, essentially what looked like dominoes and this set of big black dice and looked kind of weird. So we decided to play it, and essentially it's still like, uh, it, it's like a, a matching game where you roll the dice and two symbols come up. And each tile in the game has a particular combination of these symbols. And all you have to do is find the that one in the mess of tiles. Like, that's the entire game. But it's a race, so everybody's trying to find them. And you stick your finger in this little divot. It's savage, because people shove their <laughs> fingers in at the same time. So if you have nails or high finger strength, like, you could really do some serious damage. But it was a fun game, and we ended up playing it a lot at After Dark. And there was one game, I don't know if you guys remember it, where we decided to give away a shirt based on the winner of a game of Cobra Paw, <laughs> and it got so violent. <laughs> <laughs> Almost It was as like violent. we're giving oh. away a three-piece <laughs> suit. It was so, so, so violent. Yep. It wasn't that violent compared to other things. Com- compared to Happy Trout. Oh my mm. god. It was... Yeah. Uh, yeah, anyways. Um, okay, so... <laughs> no! <laughs> Glossing over. Happy Salmon was uh, was was fun, too. It's this game where you have to, like, scream out orders, and everyone really enjoyed it. Uh, the Gen Con <laughs> pizza was... They put sparkly gold on it. Wasn't that amazing? It was pretty good. It wasn't as good as Dragon's Breath last year, though. No, it wasn't. You know why? They needed to put onions... They needed to put onions on it. Uh, we should go back to After Dark, though. I know I'm trying to skip over the fact that I... What what what, what do you call it when you assault somebody, but, like, they agree to the assault? You, you thrashed Domestic his violence. forearm. So, Pain? Matt... Matt, uh... Holland? I, Matt Holland. I was, don't I even know the name of the guy you assaulted. I was debating whether I was going to say Matt H or Matt Holland. But anyways, Matt Holland. Now we revealed his, it. His username is his full name in here, so I wouldn't oh, worry okay. too much. There we go. I'm always kind of nervous about people's identities. I never know what to do, so I just YOLO. Anyways, he and... Well, I was... At, at, after Dark, <laughs> everybody that was partaking in alcohol was partaking in a lot. You know, is that a fair statement? 
pretty much. There yeah. was some serious sure. boozing going on. People were and having a good time. Patrick, who who helps us organize the event in collaboration with Sean, was bringing down these shots of Jagermeister. <laughs> so we had been doing beers and shots. So it was it was boozy, right? So very very boozy. Anyway, something that I do when I get really really hammered is I love to give incredibly hard high fives. And myself and a friend of mine, uh, a local friend, dude named Scooter. He and I have these epic high five battles where you keep high fiving until someone says they don't want to high five anymore and they're the loser. Anyways, in this happy salmon game, God, this story is stupid. <laughs> There's a maneuver you have to do in this game where you basically reach past each other's hands. So imagine you're going for a handshake and you reach past each other's hands and then you kind of hit their their forearms. You're hitting each other's forearms. And you should do it pretty lightly. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like, you should do it gently. Anyways, I realized that I could combine two things that I quite liked, which was happy salmon and incredibly hard high-fiving. So I was going around, I was really hard happy salmoning people. <laughs> it's just a terrible idea. Anyways, Matt Holland and I get linked up, and he and I had the most epic slappy salmon battle of all time i don't think either of us ever submitted no, i think it was the rest of us were begging okay, but at a certain point stop. you just started slapping like it was no longer about happy salmon oh no no it was just it was just a, a test of wills at right. one point where can i put the but... picture in now oh, oh I was my just, god I was is it as bad up. as i think it's gonna be here it goes is it gonna upset me we slapped each other's arms and we both ended up badly reddened and bruised no. oh, but it didn't hurt it didn't Both is a bit bad. <laughs> oh, oh God! Look at those finger marks. <laughs> the one that Brian oh, shows Lord. is the roughest one. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God! I came back over and Matt's got ice on his arm. I'm like, ah, oh. all right. Yeah, the, my I also like had ice on my later. arm. I also he, had ice. Nobody cares, Brandon. <laughs> what Look at that yeah, but you're like that older brother who feigns illness because you just knocked your younger brother out. I'd like to note we only took the picture so we could provide it to the police later. Yeah. <laughs> he decided not to press charges, so it's fine. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> it was when he went over to get the ice from the, the server the server lady. And she thought he wanted ice for his drink, so she kept kinda of trying to offer him like a cup of ice. And then when he showed her this is from watching from like across the across the room, he showed her his forearm and her <laughs> face was like horrified. <laughs> Who did this to you? Oh my god! But you know what? It's like all horrible things. It's I, it's brought it's brought Matt and I closer together at the end. <laughs> Great. You know? Your face was the worst. I thought Brandon was going to cry. I Monster felt terrible. Man. I felt so bad because we were just goofing around. I I was pretty surprised when I looked at my own arm, but I was mortified when I looked at his because it was really <laughs> it was really red. He's tough, though, eh? To stand in there. Like, I was dead drunk. You could have slapped me all night. I wouldn't have cared. But that's that's a lot of slapping to endure. I feel like he's he had a couple it. at that point. What's that? I said, I feel like he had had a couple at that point. Really? I, I felt like he hadn't had any. Anyways, well, he wasn't nearly as tuned as I was. No. But tough dude. And uh, you know, it's kind of a weird, funny story. As funny as like assault stories can be. After Dark was an absolute <laughs> blast, though. I really, you know, like it couldn't have gone better in terms of a final hurrah for the for the first stage. Like, I, I, I if I, if I could write down my ideal event and how it would go, I would just write exactly what happened. It was so fantastic. Was so great. huge, huge thanks to Patrick and the whole gang at the Slippery Noodle for once again hosting After Dark. And a huge thanks to everybody that came and made it such a fun, fun night. I had an absolute blast. And you know what? That was the most gaming I did at Gen Con. I played so many damn games that night, including probably the worst game of code names I've ever played uh, all around. It was just horrendous. I remember at one <laughs> thanks point... Thanks to you! What was the worst clue? Maybe Peace and Thought can help me. There was one where it was like like sexy or something and it was like chrome uh, was pretty something bad. so unsexy fiddle okay the clue was <laughs> romance yeah. the clue is romance and the answer that i was looking for was fiddle <laughs> how is that possible meanwhile bikini was there and i think shoulder <laughs> rub was there and it was fiddle yeah unbelievable 
At least it wasn't ban. At least it wasn't banjo. Yeah, that's. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, that was it. Was probably the best game of Code Names I've ever played too. Because Bard Lee was there thinking pretty hard about it, and oh my God, well, the, the thing is, is when you give clues, like you said, Chrome, and I said, oh, whistle, and um, I think Jen said, a uh, stethoscope, which were right. right. You guys immediately got them. But then, then we're like, wait, no, it. it's branded. It has to be something not that obvious. So we went with Windows because Windows Chrome and yeah, no, that was wrong. I still don't understand Windows Chrome. What's Windows Chrome? Wasn't there a version of Windows that was Chrome? You're thinking no, of oh, Google. Google Chrome. Google. Well, there you go. That's what beer will do to you. <sighs> but you know what? I, when you guys had said it, because I went, I went, on my own my team was like no don't don't say chrome and i was like yeah (laughs) so i said it and then you immediately went to what i was thinking i'm like bam redemption time and then you guys totally went astray god codenames is so fun eh? what a genius design and concept so fun it's a good game but yeah after dark was an absolute blast and we had a beer exchange uh, that that kind of got messed up in that we all got really scared about bringing beer for some reason. But myself and Nathan, who is who is he on here? Is is he a person on here? I only know him by his real name. Uh, we ended up bringing beer and exchanging Yosemite. Them. Oh, is Yo- he okay? Yosemite. Yeah, he and his wife brought some beers, uh, so we exchanged. And then Sean, you didn't bring your beers to the exchange, but then you and I did some secret exchanging behind the scenes. Uh, and Electron John received a steam whistle from Canada. So, uh, I would love to do another next year. I'm going to work harder to organize it more effectively. Because it's so fun to get beers, especially when it's beers from somebody's local area. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I don't know why, but that's really fun. What did you guys do at uh, After Dark that was ridiculous? Yeah, I was just going to ask Peace... Yeah, I was going to ask Peace and Thought. We played this game where you have, like, four coasters in front of you, and underneath three is a flower, and one has a skull. Skulls. And it, is it just called Skulls? Or Skull, one of the two. Okay. Oh, Skulls. Okay, and it's really easy. You just pick one of yours to lay face down, and then on your everyone puts one in front of them face down, and then whoever's first can either place another one on top, or they bid, and you're bidding how many you're going to flip over. And you have to flip over any in front of yourself first. So you're trying to, like bluff how many you want to flip if you have a skull in front of you like you say like two but you really don't want to flip yours hoping the next person who bids higher will think yours were safe to flip so it's this bluffing game it's this great easy super easy game if you flip over a skull you lose one of your coasters it becomes harder to play um and we were playing it in uh um ah, shoot secondhand took was there or wandering took dang it secondhand secondhand took okay secondhand took was there Mark, yes. And uh, I was doing the Brandon thing, right? I wasn't sure if I was supposed to say his real name. And uh, <laughs> he late. bid one. He bid one. Like, you never bid one. Like, no one's going to let you just get your bid of one and flip over your own your own uh, coaster. So I go, nobody bid. Nobody bid. Just pass. 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 So it goes around the table. All five of us pass, 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 pass. <laughs> He just looks at me. He's like, you son of a bitch. He had a skull. He had a skull in front of him. He just didn't want to put another one in front of him. <laughs> so he totally lost just flipping over his own skull. Uh, that's a really good game. Simple games are always so ridiculously fun. Especially when beer's involved. Did Will of uh, the White Book podcast fame uh, show you the game that he brought and was giving away to people where you just play it standing in line? Yeah. That was quite fun. Yeah, it was, it was a cool quite fun, especially game. when you play it with somebody you know and you try to like outthink them. It was fun. It was fun to see him and his wife. You know, he's like the godfather of LCG podcasting, so it's it's always exciting to run into them. We'll Good to after to, dark. We'll have to try to plan it next year so that we can go to theirs and we don't have a conflict because they have karaoke at theirs, and it was very hard not to jump ship. Sean and I are going to duet several songs. Yes. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. So let's make sure that we don't. We, we plan on, uh, we plan on debuting our two man Jesus Christ superstar show. Oh, wow. <laughs> that should be yeah. something to behold. It's going to be incredible. <laughs> wow. But yeah, let's make sure that we don't conflict with them next time then. Yeah. That'll be fun. On it. 
It's the one thing I'm going to remain involved in is organizing After Dark. Yes, yes. After Dark is such a special, special, bizarre, fun, weird event. <laughs> there was no Dark Elves at Gen Con, essentially, this year. They're out of favor. Totally gone. Uh, no LCG news. Also out of favor. Totally gone. <laughs> Game dead. Confirmed. Yeah. I played Arkham Horror for the first time. And? It's really fun. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's so fun. Like, I think it's fun because it's like it's like this, like, story that's being told. Oh, my God. I just dropped one of my dice on the concrete floor. It's like this story. It's fine, I think. Uh, I, I like the sort of narrative aspect of it, and you crawl around on the map. Mm-hmm. The map is really neat, too. Yeah, yeah. it was fun. Now, now I brought you in on one of my favorite scenarios, the werewolf one. Which I think, yeah, I think that's a good one to come in on because it stands on its own so well. Yeah, it was good. I enjoyed it. Who was my lady? My lady was quite powerful too. I liked her. I gave you my Agnes deck because Agnes yeah, is the queen. I liked Agnes. She had good like mind power or something like that. Yep, really good willpower. Mm-hmm. Yes. No, it, it, it's a good game. It's a good game. I was very surprised at how I had thought it was like Lord of the Rings reskin. It's not. No, it's a totally it's different game, as I've been saying the whole time. Yeah. No, you you were actually right, Sean. Turns out it's, it's worthwhile to listen to you. Mm, mm, say that again. <laughs> no. It's, it's so juicy. What was that game we demoed? And, Dragonfly. Uh... Oh, okay. <laughs> Dragon. Yay. God, there's always a demo or story. And I'm going to tell this to anybody who's involved with the game industry at all. You know what? Dave G should be like a, model. a consultant. He should mm-hmm. be a consultant where he goes around and helps game companies prep their game demoers. Because a He's Dave great. G demo, he can take like a turd of a game and make it pretty okay. Yeah. Whereas other people... What? Sorry? We were demoing that in Mortals, and I didn't really get what was going on. That demo wasn't bad until Dave G come along and started explaining the rest of it at the table. It's true. Like, he, he breathes new light into the demos, so... Uh, and I like that Immortals game. It was fun, but it was a little confusing for just a one go. I hate like, learning I games like that. I hate learning programming games because the first time you play it, like you just throw shit out, and then you spend yes. half the game just regretting every decision yeah. you've ever made. Well, at one point, Nick is like, I'm just going to put blanks down. I'm like, sounds good. <laughs> and I did the exact <laughs> same thing. I was like, oh, I'll blank everywhere. But anyways, uh, yeah, Dave G is a really good demoer and we we did this demo of what was it called again stokes Dragon clearly Fire. the demo failed Dragon Dragonfire. Fire. yeah so it's the Which new like saw... it's the new D like adventure card game they're like in the you know four way or sorry they're foraying into the uh, the co-op card game it's just a reskin of shadow run crossfire as well right pretty much right yeah because the the, the demo who shall rename Nameless, right? <laughs> or do we roast this kid? Well, we named him on uh, Mythos Busters, so... Uh, okay, so... he He's, like, the lowest energy, couldn't care less. You know what? He, if he'd probably listen to this and be like, damn right. Like, he didn't <laughs> care one bit about He took pride in his apathy. Or the game. Like, he was like, have you guys ever played Shadow on Crossfire? And we're all like, nope, nope, nope. And, like, he was just like... <sighs> You know, like, he just died inside that he was now going to have to talk about the game. I swear he hated the game. He hated <laughs> Dragonfire. Oh, yep. my God. The kid's name was Zale, but <laughs> we ended up calling him Fail because the demo was just such a piece of garbage. It was so bad. Mm-hmm. Where no one really knew what was going on, and nothing was explained, and everything was an effort for him to explain. But uh, Sean, do you want to talk about the, the distribution? <laughs> my favorite of part. Oh my I God. think you do the best so... <laughs> rendition of his apathy. It's so ridiculous, and I, I got oh a special God. seat for it because uh, there were only what like five spots at the table, and I was like the sixth yes. guy, and I really had to go to the bathroom. So I'm like, all right, I'll come back and watch. You were the Overwatch guy, so yeah. you could see all go down. So so I come back and I like I just sense something's <laughs> wrong with the atmosphere of this demo. Like everyone's kinda like Zale's very, very not interested in being there. 
no you, you guys not are in the process of building your cards up to kill a monster or something and then brandon like lays down or we believe we are we don't know what we're doing right. nothing's been exp- i guess i have two reds right <laughs> right so brandon eventually lays down some cards that kills this monster and the kid goes oh you killed a monster you get eight gold he leans back in his seat grabs a handful of gold tokens off the table and goes <laughs> yay and as he's doing it he just chucks a gold at a time at every player at the table going around yay oh my god it was so so sad how little energy his yay it Sean, was I think terrible. I think your yay actually had more emotion than uh, his did <laughs> yeah. it's, it's almost hard to not have the amount of emotion he had. Sean, you sounded about 15 times more excited than he did. <laughs> yeah. That was a fun demo to watch. <laughs> it was terrible to play. I don't you know what? I have no idea how good that game is because it basically turned into watching this slow slow train wreck of a demo unfold. Like that became my <laughs> entertainment. And then they had these candies there where they were uh, shaped I, I, like I, I, Candies is a really strong word for what those things were. I thought they were Hard just dice pieces. that they were giving out, just like novelty dice that were right. beer or whatever. But apparently they were candy, and apparently yeah, they were hardened, awful. They were hardened, terrible. They're like hardened corn syrup. Ooh. Yeah. Uh, as most candy With, is. Like, yeah, maybe like some kind of... <laughs> but you notice I left, the word, I left the word flavored out of there. <laughs> oh, yeah. It was awful. It was awful. And Zale, again, was throwing them around like they were rat poops. Like, he just was so, so, oh, my God. He didn't want to be there at all. <laughs> I want to interview him. Stop. Well, you, like, summoned him when we were walking around on, like, Friday or something. You said his <laughs> name five times and then suddenly oh appeared in front God. of us. <laughs> That's right. The Beetlejuice moment where we had mentioned him. And then, like, two <clears> seconds <throat> later, there he goes, like, eyes half closed in like a daze walking right by us it was crazy zale juice zale juice <laughs> he Ew. was uh he was quite quite the demo so you know game companies man hype your demoers up a little bit for heaven's sakes i don't know Offer, to... he, he looks like he could have used a free entry into that uh, deviance of anime booth Yes, he should have gone into the porn booth, and then his eyes may have may have opened. Which I'm sad we weren't able to go into. Not from lack of desire, at least on my part. The what is it called? Deviant cosplayers. Uh, but there was always a lineup of of really greasy dudes waiting to get in. There, oh so. man, we were gonna get in line, and I looked at the people coming out, and they all had the same look of like fifty percent embarrassment, fifty percent of why did I just waste my time doing this? I'm like, which oh. makes me a hundred percent interested. So I really wanted to go in and see, but we uh, we didn't bother waiting in line. I don't yeah, know. You it's put, like you put a curtain out in front of, it, of anything, and it's just gonna make it more intriguing. The it's line true. is like the line was like double FFG's line, so you know, it's a long line. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> It was it was too long though to go into the pervert tent. You know what I mean? I, and none of us had any idea of what was in there. Was it people? Was it photos? I have no I idea. I believe it's photos. Photos. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Which is better? Like the the booth didn't look very big. I wouldn't want to go in there and like if you're not interested, you're now like body to body with this person. Ah, anyways, we didn't go in. Um, <laughs> That's my list of stuff. Is there? Oh, and my easiest border crossing ever. Going back to Canada. Normally they grill you. You know what I mean? Because you've you've got stuff, and they know you've got stuff. So I get to the line, and the lady's like, "I have my passport." Like reaching towards her, and she's like, "Where were you?" And I was like, "Indianapolis." She's like, "For Gen Con?" I was like, "Yeah." She's like, "Have a nice day." <laughs> Didn't even take my damn passport. Didn't ask me about alcohol or spending or anything i could have too nerdy to be a criminal (laughs) i think that's sadly what it was it's like okay loser you know but i could have had like the car packed with fireworks and beer so at that moment i had like non-criminals remorse i don't know if that's a thing but really felt bad that i hadn't uh, decided to super smuggle stuff in but i got uh oh i can't see it now it's out in the garage i got a couple of cool beers but now i can't remember any of them very good though 
Anything else that you guys want to cover? Oh I've, man, I've just... got everything done now. You know, this every year Gen Con gets better, which you know I would assume is impossible because it's you have such a great time for the money you spend. But this year, the thing I really liked was all the people we met that went to yes. Gen Con for the first time. Uh, Bardane's first time, I believe it was Fishbaugh's first time. Uh, someone else, Peace and Thought, was that your first time? If he's still in here, um, God, was it Secondhand Tooks' first time? Oh yeah, Brandon, tell the story about the guy that we ditched. Oh, oh yeah, God. that was so so brutal. Um, so everything there was a... about that entire exchange was just weird. It was so weird. Now was we had I had been drinking at that point, right? A, lot, a yeah. little, a little. Okay, a lot. okay. So I was loaded, that's and I like, think that sentence could apply to ninety percent of Gen Con. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> I think this guy was pretty pretty loaded too. Because yeah. that's how we kind of came together. Uh, I remember we kind of linked because I said something weird. We yeah right? okay. We, so we were we'll... walking by the massage chairs. So they had the whole kiosk there where you can get a massage, which and... some people did in the first two minutes of the convention, which <laughs> I find right. strange. Right. Well, on Thursday morning, we walked in and the tables were full. It's like, what have you done? Right. Um, oh, I just go to Gen Con for the massage booth. <laughs> So anyway, we were walking by the empty chairs at the time, and you said something about a happy ending, and some random ass right. dude who we were just walking by, his head turns, and apparently something in his head said, "I must engage this man who said something about yeah, a happy which, ending," which I respect the guy for. <laughs> and then I kind of removed myself from that whole situation, so I don't know exactly what happened next. Well, we walked for a little while, and he and I were talking. We were going to will call, right? Yeah, we were heading to the will call, and it was it was getting weird. But anyways, I think I had mentioned at one point that Stokes does an incredible Michael Caine imitation. Yep. yep. And I was like, "Do it, Stokes, do it." If I recall correctly, you guys can correct me. Yes. And Stokes was like, "No, I don't want to do it." And I said to the guy, "Well, he'll do it, but you've got to close your eyes <laughs> so you can really imagine Michael Caine while he does it." <laughs> so the guy's like, "Okay," and he closes his eyes. And I made the runaway symbol, and there had to be like nine of us. Oh yeah, well, and he cupped his hand over his ear and leaned, like right to be, sil- to be silly, you know, right? Like yes. to be really stupid and silly. His eyes are closed at this point, so I make the run symbol. Nobody even hesitated for a <laughs> second. All of us just sprinted away, and then the guy we are we're now far from him. He kept his eyes closed for a ridiculously long time. <laughs> We're far from him. He opens his eyes, and now he sees the gang of us, like, too far to chase us down. Like, he would have to have run. (laughs) He just flips us the bird. It was terrible. It was really, really terrible. We all just booked it. We didn't even question it. Well, it's so funny. that It's a good idea. Let's go. (laughs) Yeah. Let's just ditch this guy. And we ditched him so hard, which is mean. That's not like us. You know, normally we're really about embracing people and welcoming them. That was actually his first and last Gen Con because he got <laughs> he got bullied so savagely. Oh, man. You know good. what's something else that's crazy? You guys know last year I basically had to beg for a ride home and my angel of mercy showed up in the form of two dudes that just happened to be there in Toronto. One of those dudes this year got stuck for a ride back to Toronto and again through a bizarre network of Torontonian friends ended up getting in touch with me to now drive him home in a reversal of fortunes. So it was my That's moment crazy. to balance out karma in the universe. But what are the chances, eh? Like, you get stuck in Indianapolis, you're from Toronto, you drove a guy home the last year, and now that guy is there to drive you home. That's crazy. I mean, the when dude... he found out it was you, though, he was like, fuck it, I'm walking. But <laughs> <laughs> Well, I remember originally it was put to me that it was going to be a female, so there was you know, some some interest and excitement there. But then it turns out that it was this dude that drove me home previously. So I was so excited to drive him back to write the universe. But ultimately, it turned out he got to drive directly to his hometown. He was from the Toronto area. You so. say write the universe, but you did a lot of talk about rubbing his nose in it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well. Making him we pay were... for all the gas. I'm going to make yeah. him mule back the beer. Okay, I talk a big game, guys, but I would have treated treated him like a king. You know what I would have said to him, buddy? You're going to ride like royalty. <laughs> ride like royalty. So, um, anyways, I didn't drive him home, but what a, what a weird chance 
that now it was my chance to show my quality. And I was going to do it. You guys know I was going to drive them home. Yep. yep. Mm-hmm. What Very a Gen Con. It was amazing. I got to meet Nick, which was fun because I played RPGs with them. Yeah. Yeah. Nick's really cool. Meeting so many people. You know, I was going to dangerously go into the territory of naming all the people I was happy to meet. I was happy to meet everybody because <laughs> inevitably there's going to be people I forget. Good tactical call. Great Gen Con. Oh, Granite City kind of failed me this year. Love the food. But then they had this beer on advertisement, this mango ale, which sounded really good to me. So I I ordered it from the waiter. He's like, no, we don't have that. I'm like, well, hold on. It says it on a sign coming in. He's like, no, no, it's this other one. I'm like, well, I don't think it is. So I walk over the sign. Doing the, the bait and switch with the mead. Yeah, I'm like, I don't want a mead. It says right on your sign mango ale anyways i show the guy the sign he's like no no it's this mead i didn't take it well because i really wanted this mango ale i didn't do anything weird i was just like fine i'll just have this one then (laughs) and then my beer comes their beer is generally good the dude for sure wrung out a dish rag in my beer it was so not on point but the food was delicious man that restaurant has good food eh Mm mm-hmm and it was empty, Dude, essentially. You need to come to Minnesota, where the original Granite Cities are. I am coming to Minnesota. <gasps> yes. Yeah, that is that is like a, a thing I am going to do in 2018. Yes. So, I'll I'm greatly you. looking forward to it. Yeah, uh, that was the thing. It was no problem getting in and out of restaurants this year, which was crazy. Well, um, uh, Steak and Shake was still pretty busy, but not absurdly busy. Yeah, and parking was so much easier too. I had basically prepared great. myself for the for the apocalypse when Gen Con announced that it had sold out of <clears throat> badges, and it was not nearly as right. bad as I expected. Maybe, maybe it's like they expanded it to the Lucas Oil Stadium. I don't know. Well, was I was just going to ask: Is the parking in Lucas Oil always available, or and we just didn't know that, or did they open it because they expanded? No, it's it always they... been available. I think that's 20... what we used this year. It was yeah. awesome. Twenty bucks for all day. And you have to walk like half a block before you're actually in the convention center and air conditioning. I mean, it was... Well, there's like like a tunnel directly from the convention center to the stadium as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there's video games in that tunnel, I've heard. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Like, you get to that... There's only like a half a block between that and the stadium that you actually walk out. Right. Yeah, that was awesome. And can I just say I love Uber? I One morning I had to sleep in, so I slept in and everybody else left, and then I just Ubered in. God, it's so easy. My ride was weird. It was this lady blasting this really gangstery rap, but Uber is fantastic, man. Great, great app. And Indy is really the only time I use it. Mm-hmm. So fun. Okay, guys, anything else before we wrap it up? We'll just go around and maybe you can share as many <clears throat> memories as you want. I won't restrict people. Stokes, you came the farthest. How? What, what's your feeling on Gen Con, sir? No, it was really good. Had a great time. You were the only one who uh, bothered with L5R this year. Uh, yeah, I didn't get many games, though. We played, like, uh, I think three or four games. Well, the one we played was invalidated by the fact that you cheated several times. What? There was no <laughs> no, that sounds exactly like when we learned Conquest. <laughs> I haven't played it straight. It's a good game, though. It's fun. I like setting those mercy dials or whatever they're called. On the dials, yeah. Yeah, it's kind of a neat little gambling aspect to how many cards you're going to draw. It's fun. Definitely. Was it your game of the con? Uh, no, Dragonfire was my game of the con. <laughs> <laughs> uh, good times. And it was so nice to meet you in person, Stokes. And thanks. It really was. One more time for the swag, man. Really no appreciate that. And all the listeners that managed to get one really appreciate it too. You know? Oh yeah. Everybody was just over the moon about it. Yeah. And mine, oh. I, I kept them in my car and I have that tiny little red car. I think I got super high on the way home. They had a little bit of an odor to them. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's why I got across the border so easily. I didn't actually cross the border. Next episode we're recalling them. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. All people going to toxic shock. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, how about you, Chad? Anything you want? No, it was just a great time. Like I said, meeting so many people yes. that I've become friends with over the last couple of years for the first time was great. Talk to uh, Fishbaugh, who's going to have a part in the second age. He's going to be the editor. So uh, 
It was amazing. Oh, he's going to take him. on Brian's role. Yep. Yep. He he's. Used to fill. I've been filling them lately, but but not filling them. I, I, <laughs> there's absolutely there's zero there's editing. There's been no editing. <laughs> Edit in a very loose sense of the word. Yeah. Shove intro on. Shove outro on. Send. Works for me, but it's one less thing I have to do. So. Hell yeah. And, and he's going to do a little more. He he said he wants a project. I said, oh, well then we'll come up yeah, with some cool stuff. I said that once. Yeah. <laughs> Whoops. Well, he... <laughs> so it was great meeting him and you know Bogey and everybody else. Um, I don't know. I don't know what to say. It's it's still like a blur in my mind. Like I can't ever just focus on one moment because then it gets you never will be able jumbled to. together. It's uh, if you ever get the chance to go go for the amount of money you spend versus the amount of fun you have it's like the best vacation you could ever have. And if you just cram yourself in like sardines, five people in one hotel room, it gets really cheap. It really does. It really does. And just eat at Steak and Shake once a day, one seven by seven. It's seven dollars and seventy seven cents. Yeah, it was stupid that cheap that was. Yeah. <laughs> That's so good. B, how about you? Um We barely saw you. What what did you do? I, I did a lot of stuff. <laughs> Uh, let me see. What were my highlights? How long are you looking for this episode to go? Another hour. Oh boy. <laughs> um, well, let's However see. Long. Yeah. So, so my thing is this year I went with, uh, my, my very good friend, Justin, um, and my coworker, Leah and her husband, that was kind of my primary group. Uh, we all, uh, hoteled together and whatnot. So we drove in into town every morning and checked everything out. Um, just a little bit more of a chilled experience from what the Brandon assemblage is usually used to. So that's kind of what I was looking for this year. Um, but it was really good. We we got to check out a lot of stuff. We we spent the majority of our time trying to demo games and doing that kind of stuff. Um, major highlights for me. Uh, I participated in an evolution tournament. And I got obliterated. I mean, it was... It was embarrassing how badly I did. Oh, uh, that's a shame because you talk a big game about it. Yeah, I'm definitely never playing that game again. So, Aww, really? Evolution can go straight to hell. Um, that's no, lie. I'll play it again. But one one of the big complaints about that game is that it's uh, it's very difficult to catch up if you get behind at some point. Um, and that's just what happened to me. I had one really bad, stupid turn. Uh, and I just couldn't recover. The other guys were too well set up, and I, I just couldn't do anything about it. And it didn't make any strategic sense for them to pick on each other when they could go after me. So that sure. was that was the problem. It was just strategically everybody wanted the win, so they were going to go after me when... Oh, that's tough. In the spirit of the game, it, it right. sucked, but that's what it is, so... Um, yeah. Now, with that said, while I was at the Evolution Tournament, my entire friend group betrayed me because the day before, I think it was, yeah, it was the first day, we went in one of the side entrances uh, right by the yellow booth, and who makes that Harry Potter deck building game? Oh, USA uh, USA USA Oakley. Oakley. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they, we were right by those two booths. Um, Andrew and Leah wanted to go to the Harry Potter thing. There was some expansion for that they wanted to get. And uh, Justin wanted to get something at the yellow booth. So they they both said, they were like, Brian, you can just go, you know, do whatever you want. We'll meet up. I was like, no, I'll just wait here. So they were waiting in their lines. While waiting, there was a game being demoed at the yellow booth. Um, it's, it's a game made by a French company. I honestly don't remember the name of it. I think it's something Decrypto. like... Crypto. And Crypto. It, 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 Decrypto? Decrypto, I think. Decrypto. Yeah. Um, and so I really, really, really wanted to demo this game. Um, and we decided we didn't want to do it right then. There was no one sitting at this table. We could have demoed it right then and there. But there was nobody sitting there. And when everybody got back together, we were like, oh, let's go, let's go look around a little bit or whatever. We came back later that day. I wanted to wait. Or no, no, the next day. We waited outside the table, and there was somebody already demoing. And these jerks were too impatient to wait for it. But then I found out while I was at the Evolution Tournament, those assholes went and demoed the game without me. Ooh. Talking about how it was the best thing they demoed so far. And they were so excited to get it. Blah, 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 blah. I was pissed. So I you're going to hang out with us again next year? Oh, yeah. X F those guys. Yeah. I'm actually going, I'm going to right. become an official employee of Gen Con. Wait until those three 
attempt to get their pass, and I will ban it. <laughs> Domestic terrorism. I'll do whatever it takes. <laughs> I'm going to take them out. Um, but with that said, we did get to end up demoing the game. I made uh, I made everybody go back and demo it with me. And Dave, we played that one together, right? Yeah, yeah. Because Saturday, everybody else said uh, event like Ark, stinky Arkham events. Right. Early, so I right. You guys, you we guys out all ditched Dave and left him I was all sleeping. alone. So <laughs> we, we graciously cradled him within our arms and took him into our little side group for Saturday. Yeah. But uh, it's like a combination of code names and Dixit, and it's really, really good. Yeah, um, it was good. Based on the short experience, I would think it will be a more enjoyable game than Code Names is. Um, I think Code Names is really good, but if you get stuck with someone who's not necessarily that good at giving clues, it's not a fun game. Been like, there because both of you just sit there and get frustrated. And, yeah. and it's not fun. This one is a lot easier to give clues, but it's it's less about the clue you give, and it's more about the series of clues that you're giving. Um, and so you just you want to be careful about what it is you're saying, and you're generally speaking, you're going to be very in sync with the person you're actually working with on your team. It's just that the other team gets to hear your clues and try and figure out what it is you're doing. So you're working together very effectively and you're just trying to stop the other team. It's just, it, it does something that code names doesn't quite accomplish. I don't know. I can't quite put my finger on it, but um, it definitely check that game out when it comes out. Dave, do you remember the name of the company at all? Uh, it's up on board game geek. It says the publisher. Oh, no, that's French. The that Scorpion sounds right. Mask or something. Yeah. Yes, that's right. That sounds right. So it looks, looks really cool. I really look forward to picking that one up. Um, we went over on Saturday with uh, with Stokes, and we explored the Lucas Oil Stadium. That was pretty cool. Um, was it all just like uh, D and D going on over there? There was a lot of D and D, <laughs> and there was. Oh my god, Dave! What's the name of that game? I hate it. Laser tag. No, I love laser tag. Um, we'll get to that one in a second. No, no, no. That board game, the A one, the farming one. Agricola. 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 Yeah. There was an Agricola tournament going all day. I was like, God, I cannot uh, imagine a better living hell for me than an Agricola tournament. Ugh. Just awful. I thought Brian was going to jump in and be like a laser tag judge at one point. He kept focusing on the well, game. Yeah, okay. So we around. sat at this table, and there was this laser tag thing that was set up. And they had these like like curtains that were hung over just like PVC pipe structures and stuff that you could go hide behind and stuff like that. And I caught all these stupid kids cheating. They would like lean out of the actual <laughs> zone and peek around corners they weren't supposed to be using. Oh. And one, one kid got tagged out and on his way back to his base to recharge, he lifted the flag for his team. I tried to call him out, but the judge didn't hear me. But I really sure, wanted that like, kid. Speared him. I really wanted to. With that said, we then watched one guy take a digger at one point. I don't know what he tripped on, but he, like, legitimately got hurt and had to stop playing. And they had to, like, almost carry him away. Ooh. And then he just sat in his chair and watched his friends play laser tag for the like 20 minutes. No. Ouch. Oh. No, nah, he deserved it, though. He was not a good laser tagger. Um, Let's see... There was apparently a water main burst on Friday morning, so we did not get to shower Friday morning, which was not a pleasant experience. Um, well, it just doesn't really set you apart from most of the people at Gen Con, right? That's very, that's very, very true. <laughs> yeah. Showering um, is optional there. Yeah, oh, I, the stink was pretty bad this year. Oh, my goodness. Um, I would say the only other major thing is one of the nights we were there, I don't even remember which one, we stopped and had dinner at Steak and Shake. Yeah! And it was not good. We went to a one, like, a little bit north of downtown, and it was really not a great experience. Um, food wasn't great, service wasn't great, etc. So afterward, I started talking about the merits of Taco Bell and how wonderful Taco Bell is. Hell yes, um, brother. Preach Justin, up. Justin's kind of on that train. Andrew's kind of on that train. My friend Leah, coworker Leah, is not down with uh, with Taco Bell. Don't but be I started talking about chili cheese burritos and how 
amazing chili cheese burritos are and how you can't find them anywhere. So we stopped at one Taco Bell. I called another Taco Bell. No one was going to give us chili cheese burritos, which led me to discover a secret Facebook group of people who worship the chili cheese burrito. They've broken down the recipe and they've got it all figured out. There's also a large map of all the Taco Bells that will still make chili cheese burritos available so that you can find those. I was Good ultimately Lord. disappointed because I took a lift back to our hotel at one point, and our lift driver also did not know about any chili cheese burrito locations. What's Lyft? Lyft is a competitor of Uber, and you should use them instead. It's better. Okay. There are also political motivations I have behind that. But anyways, um, he did not know where any chili cheese burritos were, but he gave us this awesome tour of like a really nice part of the city. Um so we got to see some of the really cool parts of Indianapolis and like uh, this cool little uh, kind of, I don't know how to describe this to people who aren't from the Twin Cities. We have a, we have an area this, in, this, in Minneapolis called Eat Street. It's just all these cool restaurants that you can't really find anywhere else. He showed us that version in Indianapolis. There were all these really cool bars that you could go to and this awesome like music shop and stuff. So I think I might make some time one of these upcoming years to actually go hang out in that area and check it out for that a while. That sounds awesome. Yeah, it was just, it would be a nice break every now and then when you want to get out of downtown and just do something a little more low key. So there were, he said there were like three or four pretty decent, if not breweries, breweries like brew pubs where they're very connected to a brewery or something like that. Right. Um, so just like this really, really cool area. And you're driving in this road that's just covered by trees. And all of a sudden you're just in the middle of this kind of, modern store area it was really fun so um beyond that i don't think i have too many major highlights i uh i would say the game of choice that i picked up from gen con this year was photosynthesis um that game looks beautiful it's really pretty it's easily like probably my favorite looking game um very simple to play. I haven't actually had a chance to play it yet, but I've read it all over the rules and it's it looks pretty uh, easy to learn, you know, tough to master, one of those types of games. Is there um, like a giraffe or gazelle card where you get to eat other people's trees? There is not. Oh, that would be fun. That would be sweet. I'm going to combine photosynthesis and evolution. <laughs> That's I'm exactly playing, where... <laughs> I'm not playing evolution anymore, so I can't do that. <laughs> Um, yeah, I definitely picked up some other stuff, but I I think overall had a lot of fun at Gen Con. I did not find this year's Gen Con to be, when I think back toward the Gen Cons that I will remember forever, this was not one of them. Um, I wonder what the thing that changed was. Not enough, Brandon. It's probably that I was just so happy the entire time, and I don't have to (laughs) think back to all the horrible memories of nice going job, to Stoke. Tilted Kilt, dealing with drunk Brandon, telling us that things are in parking lots when they're not in parking lots, <laughs> et cetera. You missed it, DJ. Uh, no, no, no. The, the social element, I will absolutely say I, I, I missed you guys. It was I was really happy that night that we did connect and got to play some games and all that. Um, but, you know, I just I kind of was looking for a little bit different of an experience this year. And I think there's a healthy blend between the two that I can still – kind of target for a little bit but the the convention itself is more what i'm speaking of like Mm -hmm. i last year i felt like i walked through that exhibit hall and i could have done it for a week straight because there were games i wanted to demo there were little things i wanted to go look at and play with and this year i i feel like i got those all done like by early friday morning and that there was really nothing else i needed to to see um I think a lot of us were talking that normally there's like this big, the big game of Gen Con and everybody knows what it is. Everybody's trying to get it, blah, 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 blah. And I don't feel like there was one this year. Well, I should say, I think a lot of people felt like that, but my theory is that the big release of Gen Con this year was Legend of the Five Rings. And I I think people are just so used to Fantasy Flight having one of their big games that's going to be so big that when it's Fantasy Flight that actually got the game of Gen Con, no one really even notices the difference. No, I think the goddamn problem is no one could buy L5R, so who the hell cared? There, yes, that's that's very true as well. Um, I'm still and everybody just gets it. stuck in the you know typical I mean, Fantasy yeah. Flight mismanagement of 
people, lines, and resources. And uh, so my my friend Justin was trying to get to the Arkham Horror event and stood in a line in the exhibit hall, you know, waiting to go get up, waiting to get up to the top of the line so he could get his pack of cards. He waits in this line for like 15 minutes. I go and join him. I'm there for another five to 10 minutes. And then we get close to the end and we're told, oh, no, that's just the line for L5R. So he sat in this stupid line for like 20, 25 minutes before somebody bothered to clarify that his event was completely separate. And they just, even up until the exact minute, they wouldn't just give him his pack of cards so he could go sit down and find a table or anything. It's just, I just, I really hate how they manage things and whatever. I'm just going on an FFG rant now at this point, but (laughs) Um, I don't know. I just, the, like I said, the convention itself, I just didn't feel that horribly connected to. I, I looked far more forward to almost getting out of the exhibit hall and just playing games with, with yeah. you guys or my group. Um, and, you know, honestly, maybe that was partly just we weren't all hanging out together like we have the last couple of years. And it was a little bit of homesickness in some way. But um, also, I don't know. I just also I, partly like it's not as easy to get in on a demo anymore. Like it's gotten so busy. Yeah. Like two, yeah, three like years you ago, you demos just, that you have to sign up for. Right. Like you could just go camp and probably play everything you want to play. But this year, man, right, it was not as easy. Yeah, you could just it, kind of bully your way into a demo by putting your crotch so uncomfortably close to people that they that's just generally what we started doing. Yeah, you have to. Like, because you just you realize that a lot of the people who are there are fairly timid. Yeah, and so. I just go and you just stand right next to the table and all you do, you just go ask the demo or a question and then now you point to something first in line. Exactly. You point to something on the table and it justifies you standing within a foot of the table at all don't times. Don't give away the secrets. Yeah. All don't right, don't ever do it, John. Don't worry. Talk loudly and rudely, which I'm doing anyway. I was going to say, that's just you. People are like, oh crap. <laughs> Let's get out of here. So that works too. Um, yeah. Well, but... I'm gonna tell you, Brian, we missed you, you know? And I like, you. Yeah, it was a little it was a little bit tough. You know, you know, Sean wasn't as much of a snuggler, so miss you dog. Not for That's... lack of trying. <laughs> That's really too bad. <laughs> yeah. You should have slept ne- you should have slept next to Stokes. Yep. Why well, was he Wait, he... what? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you were asleep, Dave. It's fine. Oh, <laughs> no doesn't count. Or maybe Yikers. that was Nick. Yikers. Brian, uh, so that's it from you, bud? I think so. Sean, how about you, my friend? Um, God, no real other experiences to, to talk about. I think my only non-card game buy of the con was <laughs> another card game. I happened to I happened by on Thursday morning the uh, Renegade booth where they were selling Scott Pilgrim's precious little card game, which I had never even heard of until I crossed that booth. And I'm a huge fan of Scott Pilgrim, so I immediately was like, I should probably go buy this. And apparently it was sold out before noon, so lucked in on that one. It's a cool game, um, cool little deck builder with with like uh, double sided cards and. Little I love double sided cards. Button. Have you watched Scott Pilgrim yet, bro? Uh no, but it's on my list of things to watch. <sighs> it needs to be higher. Uh, but anyway, that that uh, ended up being a really cool game. It was my impulse buy. I had Grim Slingers last year, Scott Pilgrim this year, so going strong. Um, yeah, I don't know. Gen Con's just kind of this cool. I don't know. It's just this experience where you get all these people who are kind of part of a fringe element, and all of a sudden, that's the predominant thing that's going on. And in a lot of ways, it's kind of magic, and in a lot of ways, it's super aggravating and smelly. But um, did you feel the magic this year, though? I did, but I feel like I had to make more of it myself. Like I feel like it was. <laughs> I, feel like, I feel like it was far less. What, what is happening? <laughs> I feel like it's far less about That's the con happened. now Maybe and Brandon. <laughs> and now it's just what? about we we know people and we play games with people and it's fun to see people and meet people so that's that's really what it's, it's now more a social event yes yeah. which is one of the reasons why well we've got some cooking so yeah we've, we've got a thing that we're we're thinking about mm-hmm <laughs> That's, That's really cool very, to say that. Very cryptic. <laughs> <clip>. <laughs> uh, um, but, okay. but, but like I said, I uh, you know, despite my involvement in the in the podcast proper ending, I will still be spearheading after dark every year. So, looking yeah, forward to that so continuing fun. on. I do want. I do. I definitely want to add that whatever magic I did not feel at Gen Con 
was the complete opposite at uh, After Dark. That was every year it gets better and better. Mm-hmm. No exception this year. Oh, this yep. year was so good. So good. Mm-hmm. I had a great time this year. And we've got this, even even with the violence. We've got more rooms that we can break into. Like I met the actual manager this year. Uh, the owner came by last well, year. Yeah, too. did anybody talk about the owner yeah, coming no, down? No, no, oh, no yeah. one did. And destroying everybody in at Happy, Happy Sam. Sam. Dude was, he had just come from a wedding, so he was dressed in a full suit. He looked like an owner. He yep. did. Yes, he did. He looked like a restaurant owner, for sure. Um, and then the uh, the manager looks like he used to be in a biker gang. Oh, or remember there was, like, some kind of police action going on outside after yeah, we yeah. left? Yeah, Brandon we had nearly got so murdered. We that had was to drag definitely you away not from as big a deal as Brandon was making it out to be, but... No. Yeah, I, I mean, think it was uh, a traffic uh, infraction. I just wanted to see what was happening. Well, somebody, was somebody woman drove, almost drove into a cop. Was, yeah, somebody w- was kept on going when a cop was waving them to stop because they were trying to control something in the intersection, and the cop got pissed and like slammed his flashlight against the back of the car and told the guy to stop. And then there was just some argument with you know trashy people arguing with cops and. Well, I I just thought we were going to yell out World Star Video and film it. That's all I thought we were going to (laughs) do. But anyway, Gen Con was awesome this year, so had a good time. Great to meet everyone. Um, Yes. I'm not sure if I've got any specific props, but uh, looking forward to next year. Yep, me too. And folks, I'm looking forward to the next episode, which is going to be the final hurrah of the first stage. So it'll be the farewell episode where we'll be doing some reminiscing and goofballiness. Uh, so hopefully people can join us for that. If you've been a fan of the show for a long time uh, and you've gotten to know us, it'll be like a good time party send off type thing. And then Chad and Chris will be taking over in the second age thereafter. So it's kind of an exciting turning point moment for Cardboard the Rings. Um, so I hope people enjoy it. Anyways, join us next time. We'll see you then. Thank you.